Our story unfolds in the Earth Dragon Kingdom's Linhai City, where countless monsters have entered the real world from other realms, and humanity is now faced with huge disasters. Thankfully, the heavens haven't abandoned humans. Markings have appeared on the backs of all humans' hands, and various special classes have awakened through those mysterious marks. Since then, mankind has entered an era of class shifters. Among the many awakened individuals, there are only three mythical classes. Lighthouse Kingdom, Ghost Swordsman, Alpha, Ephemeral Kingdom, Hell Dragon, Restavu, and Icebound Kingdom, Frost King, Quan Jixian. A hundred years ago, a talented class shifter appeared in the Dragon Kingdom. The strongest in the Dragon Kingdom, Xu Luo, became the first Adeptus of the 70th world in just 10 years. However, when the strongest level of the Nine Beasts invaded, he saved the Dragon Kingdom by defending the Rift alone, but he sacrificed himself. Today marks the 100th anniversary of Xu Luo's heroic death. A reporter reported that the memorial service held in the capital, Dragon City, the day before yesterday, was attended by the top-class shifters in the Dragon Kingdom. According to statistics, a total of 12.52 million people participated in the awakening of their kingdom this year. This is an increase of 11.3% compared to last year, setting the highest record in 110 years. Among these, core class shifters account for 10%, which has far exceeded the record in the year Xu Luo was born. Perhaps they can anticipate the birth of the next Xu Luo. While everyone was celebrating Xu Luo's 100th anniversary, in a dark room a man was shown lying on the bed. Suddenly, thunder struck and our main character, Xu Luo, opened his eyes hearing a system notification. The system repeated, The doors to an alternate world are about to open, class shifters. Please prepare. Hearing the system's voice, Xu Luo was shocked and got up immediately, asking, Didn't I die already? Where am I? But before he could understand anything, his head started to hurt like crazy. He saw memories of a body that belongs to Zhang Yue, who awakened as what is recognized as the most useless class in the world, Beast Tamer. It's not worth wasting time at all. If a poor person awakens as a beast tamer, he will die in an alternate world sooner or later, he thought. Also, Zhang Yue's little brother's medical bills had been delayed for two months, and if not paid, his brother would die. Zhang Yue could not bear all these problems alone. At his last moment, Zhang Yue said sorry to his younger brother, saying, I'm a useless older brother. I can't save you, and I can't save myself, and ate poison, and died. Seeing all those memories of Zhang Yue, Xu Luo realized what was happening. He never thought that he would reincarnate as a person with the exact same name as him a hundred years later. Seeing that Zhang Yue was a beast tamer, Xu Luo understood why he died like that. The beast tamer class mainly relies on their pets to fight. In addition to improving their own level, they can't overlook the attributes of their pets. It has been calculated that in order to cultivate a powerful beast tamer, one must have enough wealth to take over a kingdom. For ordinary people, it's definitely not good news to awaken as a beast Tamer. Xu Luo stood up and saw Zhang Yue's old photo. Looking at Zhang Yue's smiling face, Xu Luo picked up a raincoat and said, Zhang Yue, a good-for-nothing young man who failed in life and committed suicide. But I used to be Xu Luo, the strongest in the Dragon Kingdom. Zhang Yue, since I've taken over your body and awakened again, I will take up your responsibilities and regrets, conquering this alternate world where the weak fight for food. He told Zhang Yue to think of it as his gratitude to him. Luo was ready, and a portal opened in front of him with a system notification saying, The doors to an alternate world are about to open. Class shifters, please prepare. Luo had already told the system to open up. With a bright light, a portal to a different world opened, and Luo entered. Upon entering, the system recognized him as Xiao Luo, not Zhang Yue. The notification said, Dear class shifter Xu Luo, greetings. The system has detected that you've been offline for 36,552 days. Offline idle reward income is 70 points per second, so Luo's total reward is 200 billion alternate energy points. Suddenly, a pouch appeared in front of Luo, and the system congratulated him on defeating the level 9 beast wave for the first time and completing the mythical achievement. It was an unparalleled achievement, and as a reward, he obtained a mythical level treasure, Supreme Oracle. When Luo got the Supreme Oracle, it automatically activated. Luo obtained a permanent buff. Now, alternate energy collection during online and offline status in an alternate world has increased 10,000 times, and this effect is now active. After it was activated, a huge amount of energy went into Luo's body. He obtained an additional 9999 times the idle income, totaling 2,000 trillion points of alternate energy. 
Luo was surprised to see billions of trillions of alternate energy. He couldn't believe that the most advanced beast wave in an alternate world, the reward for completing it for the first time, was so rich. Luo also obtained a class reset. The system asked him to please choose one of the seven mythical core classes. Knight class Undead Doom Rider. Warrior class Dark Swordsman. Assassin class Shadow Reaper. Priest class Holy Priest. Mage class Hellfire Mastery. Archer class Ghost Hunter and Beast Tamer class Necromancer. Seeing those seven mythical core classes, Luo said, A hundred years ago, I awakened as a top-tier warrior, but the strongest core class in that alternate world was actually a Beast Tamer. It's just that the amount of alternate energy required to improve oneself and the pets is too much, making development difficult. Luo reached out his hand and said, However, since I've reincarnated and have trillions of idle rewards, my first choice would of course be Necromancer. The system congratulated him on becoming the fourth mythical core class in the alternate world, Necromancer, which is an advanced beast tamer class. When Luo chose the Necromancer class, a huge amount of energy entered his body. Seeing 100 star initial growth, Luo said, This strength is noteworthy for being a mythical class. Necromancer is a magic type mythical core class. It's the messenger of resurrection from hell. The Necromancer specializes in the power of the dead. Only death can excite the Necromancer. Its magic attack growth is 25 stars, mana growth is 18 stars, health growth is 20 stars, physical defense growth is 18 stars, and magic defense growth is 19 stars. Necromancer has three main skills. First is Soul Harvest skill. When a Necromancer kills a monster in an alternate world, there's a 1% chance of harvesting the opponent's soul and making it a pet. The pet obtained in this way cannot be traded and can only be used by the harvester or as upgrading materials for other pets to devour. Second is, Undead Evolution. All pets of a necromancer can be evolved by devouring pets of the same level. The highest is the mythical level. Pets also have unlimited loyalty. Third is Death Reduction. The experience required to upgrade all pets of a necromancer is reduced by 50%. Seeing his own stats, Luo was amazed. The pet intelligence of ordinary beast tamers is obtained through mission rewards, and the quality cannot be improved. Unexpectedly, a necromancer can not only evolve pets, but also harvest monsters as their own pets. It is indeed a mythical class. He added that in his last life, he relied on his top-tier class to clear 70 worlds in the span of just 10 years and became number one in the Dragon Kingdom. But now, since he started this life with a mythical class, he must clear the levels perfectly until the final world. Not only will he become the strongest in the Dragon Kingdom, but he will be number one in the world. After entering the first alternate world called Nightmare Source, based on Luo's login location, the system matched him with a safe area called Doomsday Town. The system reminded Luo that fighting is prohibited in safe areas and asked him if he wanted to continue using the ID Shu Luo. Luo said he did not want to continue with Shu Luo and asked the system to set his new ID as Zero, choosing the name Zero because he believed that in this life, he was destined to surpass the existence of Shu Luo and the only thing that surpasses everything is zero. He was then teleported into the doomsday town of the first alternate world named Nightmare Source. Looking around, Luo asked, Is this an alternate world? It feels the same as the real world. So mystical. A guy standing beside Luo was confused and asked another guy, Wasn't it said that there are monsters everywhere in the alternate universe? Where are the monsters? The other guy explained to him that this is a safe zone and monsters are outside. While they were talking, a public notification announced that the first world quest had been issued and could be viewed on the mission interface. Seeing that the mission had begun, everyone started to prepare in advance, asking others if they wanted to team up. Nightmare Source is the first world where darkness covers the earth, and the monsters sleeping underneath revive. The world will eventually face disaster, and as a survivor, one must break the doomsday cycle, clear many disasters, and crush the darkness. The first world quest is to kill a total of 1,000 monsters in the first world. The second world quest is to collect 10 silver coins total by killing monsters or clearing quests in the first world. After completing the above world quests, players can activate the first world boss dungeon channel. They must defeat the boss, and then players can enter the second world. Seeing the information of the world, Luo realized that the regular layout of this alternate world hasn't changed much. He decided to first buy some equipment, and then do the quest. He went into the safe town's equipment store, whose owner is Charles. Charles asked Luo what he needed. Looking around, Luo saw that the system's equipment store is the same as before, only providing some basic unrefined products. The best equipment here is one star. Seeing that Luo was not interested in the weapons, 
Owner Charles told Luo that if he was not satisfied with these, he could also provide better quality equipment. However, it would cost some more copper coins. But Luo didn't need that. He gave a pouch of 100 copper coins to owner Charles and told him to give him a one-star staff. Everyone was shocked when Luo bought that one-star staff. A guy said to Luo, Dude, the newbie gift package only gave us 100 copper coins total. Did you spend them all? Another guy told Luo that a one-star staff can't give him much attack power. It's not as cost-effective to buy a one-star weapon as it is to get a complete set of unrefined products, he said. But Luo didn't care. He thanked them for the reminder and left from there. A girl asked other guys, doesn't only weapons with a higher star rating can refine their attributes? In this case, wouldn't the attack power be increased? A boy explained to the girl that refinement of equipment requires alternate energy, which can only be obtained in small amounts through killing monster spawns and quests. So such a precious thing can't be upgraded enough. If anyone uses it to refine a one-star staff, they might have a huge hole in their head, he said. All those guys laughed at Luo. One said, this kid spent all his money and has no defense at all. He will definitely suffer disaster later. I don't know where this country boy came from, but he has no knowledge at all. No matter if it's here or outside, it's difficult to make progress without money. Luo also knows that for the average new class shifter, it's really not cost effective to spend all their money on just one star equipment. The staff Luo got was a fire mage staff for beast tamer. It's a level zero refinable mediocre magic staff that can increase damage. The alternate energy an ordinary class shifter can obtain from slaying monsters is extremely limited, and it's impossible for them to be willing to refine one-star equipment. Luo smiled, saying, It's a shame that he is not lacking. He poured his alternate energy into refining the fire magic staff. The system warned Luo that this refinement consumes one point of alternate energy, and has a 10% chance of being upgraded to a green attribute. With higher attributes, the refining consumption increases, and the success rate decreases. Luo told the system to start refining. The first refinement was a success. After the first refining, the system asked him again if he wanted to refine further. Luo said yes, and the second attempt was also successful. Luo instructed the system to continue and not stop. All refinements were successful. And finally, Luo's equipment increased to the highest level. The system informed Luo that the number of one-click refinements was 132 times, with a total consumption of 985 alternate world energy. Luo obtained the golden attribute, Fire Herald Staff. He was surprised that his staff was refined 132 times at once, showcasing the potential of hundreds of billions of alternate energy. The staff, transformed into the Fire Herald Staff, was born from flames. All enemies will be burned to ashes. Its magic attack power increased to 26, and it gained an additional attribute of intelligence. Now, the staff has a burning skill. Each time the user attacks, the enemy enters a burning state that lasts for 3 seconds losing 20 health points per second. Seeing his staff's information, Luo laughed saying, preparation for battle is complete. Now, let the show begin. Currently, Luo is a level zero necromancer shift, a mythical core class with the name ID zero. His experience for leveling up is also zero. His stats are as follows. 56 magic attack, 18 physical defense, 19 magic defense, 200 health, and 180 mana. His intelligence is 12, which affects his magic attack. His agility is 10, affecting speed and critical damage. His spirit is 10, influencing mana. His stamina is also 10, affecting defense, and his constitution is 10, impacting health. Luo doesn't have any money, but possesses 2,000 trillion units of alternate energy. As a newbie who is as powerful as everyone else, he needs to work extra hard to survive in this alternate world. Luo then steps outside the safe town to hunt monsters. Outside, the nightmare for new class shifters has begun. Some people were fighting against a giant mutant rat. A warrior struck the rat with his sword, dealing only two points of health damage. His attack barely scratched the rat. Shocked, the warrior exclaimed, Is this a low-level beast? It has so much health, I can barely deal any damage. Then, as the rat attacked, the warrior dodged immediately, knowing that if class shifters get hit, they could die. During the fight, suddenly a fireball came from behind and hit the giant rat dealing 55 health damage in one strike. The warrior and his team were surprised and looked back to see who had cast the fireball. It was Luo, using his fire herald staff, whose burning effect had triggered the attack. With that single fireball, Luo killed the giant rat, earning two experience points and 10,000 alternate energy. He also obtained a bonus buff of 10,000 times the alternate energy. Mythical class shifters have buffs full of basic attributes, including max level equipment. Those with ordinary classes need to form a team to kill even a giant mutant rat, 
but Luo can now take them down one by one. The warrior was shocked to see Luo defeat the giant rat so effortlessly. What kind of insane damage is that? A girl from the warrior's team noticed Luo's golden equipment and wondered if he could be an experienced class shifter. However, the warrior dismissed it saying, who would have that much alternate energy to refine a beginner's staff in the early stages? Curious about Luo, but understanding that he is a force to be reckoned with, they decided not to provoke him. Noting that level 1 beasts give too little experience, Luo decided to target only higher level beasts. He knew that in this first alternate world, Nightmare Source, besides the giant mutant rats, there were also level 3 to 4 poisonous spiders, level 5 to 7 armored scorpions, level 8 to 9 wild boars, and the ultimate boss of the first world, the level 10 violent boar king. Luo decided that the beasts above level 3 in the abandoned factory were his best choice and turned to leave. However, the warrior and his teammates stopped him. The warrior asked Luo about forming a team, saying they had a healer, a shielder, and a damage dealer. One girl flaunted her appeal saying, Cutie, can you take us with you? Another girl also tried to persuade him, telling Luo she was a priest and could heal him. They didn't want to let Luo go, knowing they could easily clear the first world if they were with him. With a cold expression, Luo told them he didn't need them and asked them to move out of his way. Without saying anything, the warrior and his teammates moved aside, and Luo left. The warrior, still frightened, asked his teammates if they felt Luo's aura, noting that it was even scarier than the beasts. They noticed that Luo had headed toward the abandoned factory, rumored to be filled with high-level and dangerous beasts. They wondered if Luo was planning to fight alone, commenting, as expected of a big boss, they don't follow the usual route. Inside the abandoned factory, Luo was immediately attacked by level 1 giant mutant rats and level 3 poisonous spiders. Using a thunder spell, Luo took them all down in one second. For killing each giant mutant rat, Luo earned 2 experience points and 10,000 alternate energy, and for each level 3 poisonous spider, he got 8 experience points and 30,000 alternate energy. After gaining 100 points, Luo leveled up, increasing his health by 30 and mana by 12, and he also gained 6 free attribute points. His current level is now 2, and the next upgrade requires 250 experience points. While Luo was reviewing his status window, a poisonous spider attacked him. Luo immediately used his staff to cast a thunder spell, and with a massive explosion, the spider's body exploded. After that, Luo continued killing those poisonous spiders one by one, until he leveled up again, and became level 3. Now, the next level upgrade requires 1000 experience points. Luo also unlocked the first skill bar, and obtained the initial skill, Fireball. Luo was surprised looking at his status window. He never thought that even the upgrade bonus for the mythical class would be six times higher than that of ordinary classes. After leveling up three consecutive times, he now has 18 attribute points to use freely. Knowing that the Beast Tamer class has the same growth path as that of a mage, Luo ensured faster spellcasting and stable damage, and then leveled up his agility. He allocated eight points to his intelligence, five to his agility, and five to his spirit. As for the initial skill, which isn't very powerful, Luo looked at it and thought that for those of ordinary classes with limited alternate energy, they generally wouldn't waste anything here. Unfortunately, what Luo lacks most in this world isn't alternate energy, so he decided to level this skill to the max. The fireball spell is upgradable. He can cast it 10 times, using 3 mana points, and it has a 3 second cooldown. The system told Luo that to use fireball, he must gather mana, and release a fireball that causes magic damage equal to 110% of his magic attack power to a single enemy. A critical hit will cause the enemy to enter a burning state that lasts for 3 seconds, losing 5% of blood caused by the attack every second. Luo decided to upgrade the fireball spell. For the first upgrade, it consumed 10 points of alternate energy, and the fireball upgraded to D rank with its damage increased to 112%. The second upgrade cost 500 points of alternate energy, and increase the damage to 114%. The third upgrade consumed 3,000 points of alternate energy, upgrading the fireball to a medium fireball of C rank, increasing the damage to 140%, and the burning damage per second of the special effect was increased to 8%. The fourth upgrade cost 30,000 points of alternate energy, and the fireball upgraded to super fireball, becoming a grade A spell. It has reached the highest skill quality of Luo's current class level. The system told Luo to continue upgrading after his second class awakening. Luo was happy to see the results, saying, Not bad, the damage of an initial skill at max level can reach 140%. Luo looked at the mission window and said, Based on this progress, if he completes the first two world quests, he can reach level 8 no matter what. 
When the time comes, it'll be enough for him to just challenge the ultimate boss and complete the first world. While he was busy looking at his status, he heard a noise. When he looked to his side, there was a huge door, and from behind that door, someone called for help. Luo opened the door and saw an injured guy named Carl asking for help. Looking at Carl, Luo thought that except for the fact that players actually die after being killed, this world isn't that different from an ordinary game. Missions, dungeons, and the NPC in front of him showed that it's almost similar to a game. NPC Carl told Luo that his wife and children were killed by monsters and asked Luo if he could help him kill those cruel scorpions. When Carl asked for help, a system notification appeared saying, a plot has been triggered. The system asked Luo if he wanted to accept the quest to destroy the scorpions. Luo knows that most equipment obtained from NPC missions is better than those from killing monsters. It just so happens that Luo only has a staff in hand, so this mission is worth doing. When Luo accepted the mission, the quest details showed up. The difficulty is 10. The quest is to kill all the armored scorpions and their leader, the armored emperor scorpion in the Doomsday Factory. The quest reward is 500 experience, 1 silver coin, 300 alternate energy, and a random 1-star equipment. Suddenly, Luo felt something was up ahead. He looked ahead, but it appeared empty. There was nothing. However, Luo realized what it was. He smiled and said, It seems like monsters aren't the only things here. Completing the quest is my top priority right now. While Luo prepared to fight, from a corner, some eyes were watching all his movements. Luo became alert and saw many intermediate monsters of the first world, the Armored Scorpions. The Armored Scorpion is a level 5 physical type normal monster. It has 290 health, 40 physical attack, 28 physical defense, and 25 magic defense. These scorpions have mutated due to environmental pollution and possess hard armor covering their bodies that can withstand a lot of damage. When the armored scorpions saw Luo, they activated their armor skill, which reduced the effect of Luo's attacks. After reducing Luo's attack power, an armored scorpion lunged to attack him. Luo was ready for this. He summoned his staff and prepared to fight back. When the armored scorpion attacked Luo, he quickly took out his staff to retaliate. Luo cast a fireball spell and hurled it at the armored scorpion, but the scorpion dodged the fireball and activated its collision skill to attack Luo. However, Luo turned around in midair and launched another fireball, which hit the armored scorpion and killed it. For defeating the level 5 armored scorpion, Luo earned 15 experience points and 50,000 units of alternate energy. As one armored scorpion fell, others began attacking Luo. Luo's super fireball was immensely powerful but used a lot of mana, so he couldn't cast it again immediately. It took him five seconds to prepare the fireball again. Luo used the fireball spells to eliminate many armored scorpions in one go. He recalled that when the number of normal armored scorpions decreased to a certain threshold, it would trigger the armored scorpion emperor to appear early. Just as he remembered, the giant armored scorpion emperor emerged from the ground and attacked Luo. Seeing the scorpion emperor, Luo said, I must kill it before my mana runs out. He poured all his mana into his staff and used the super fireball skill to cast a very powerful fireball at the scorpion emperor. But the armored scorpion emperor easily stopped Luo's fireball with its huge hands. Luo was annoyed to see that the scorpion emperor's body was still as thick as ever. The scorpion emperor used its stinger to attack, but Luo dodged. He jumped towards the armored scorpion emperor and got below it, targeting its soft belly. Luo used the super fireball skill again and the armored scorpion emperor's whole body caught fire, burning it inside out. Seeing it burning, Luo backed off a little saying, I'm quite lucky to immobilize it right when my mana runs out. Now I just have to give this scorpion king one last strike, and the mission is complete. Just as he said that, suddenly a white-haired man came to sneak attack from behind, while another man in front went for the armored scorpion emperor, saying, We will be the ones who complete the mission. The scorpion king would be harvested by them. Both men had been hiding waiting for Luo to weaken the armored scorpion emperor, and in the process, lose all his mana so they could steal Luo's kill, and also kill him for his equipment. When the white-haired man sneak attacked Luo from behind, Luo moved a little, and easily dodged the attack. The white-haired man was surprised, wondering how Luo had dodged his attack. Seeing that man, Luo also smiled, saying, You finally showed yourself. Hearing this, the white-haired man realized that Luo had already discovered them. Luo got ready to cast another fireball, saying, Some people will level up honestly, while others specialize in doing things like slaughtering people and stealing their kills in secret. But what a shame. You guys chose the wrong target. The enemies I once faced were a million times stronger than you. Saying that, Luo cast a huge fireball and threw it at the white-haired man. 
Seeing Luo cast that huge fireball, the white-haired guy was too scared, asking, how is this possible? But before he could get his answer, Luo's fireball hit him and completely burned his body, leaving nothing behind. When the other guy saw his partner die like that, he got scared. Looking back, the man asked Luo, aren't you out of mana? How can you still activate your skills? Luo told the guy, if you hadn't said that, would all of you have shown yourselves? Realizing that Luo was not a newbie, the man was taken aback. Because of Luo's fireball, the space caught fire, and in that fire, the already weakened armored scorpion emperor died, and its soul came out of its body. The purple soul went directly to Luo, and a system notification congratulated Luo for triggering the necromancer class effect soul harvest while killing the armored emperor scorpion. The system asked Luo if he wished to absorb the armored scorpion emperor as his pet. Seeing the notification, Luo said, it looks like my luck is pretty good to trigger the class effect so soon. He asked the system to absorb the armored scorpion emperor. The system completely absorbed the purple soul of the scorpion emperor, and as it did, a dark aura began to emanate from Luo's body. Seeing the black aura, the man became terrified. Luo's eyes turned red, and his whole body was enveloped in the black aura. A system notification informed Luo that he had received a normal grade pet, the armored emperor scorpion. Luo immediately summoned it, and from the black aura, the armored scorpion emperor emerged. This scorpion has normal grade physical defense, and is bound to its master, Luo, currently at level zero. To level up for the first time, it requires 100 experience points. The armored scorpion emperor's physical attack power is 2, physical defense is 4, magic defense is 3, it has 30 health, and 9 mana. Its loyalty level is at 100%, and every death will decrease the pet's loyalty level by 10%. The loyalty meter cannot be recovered, and when it reaches 0, the pet will revolt. The armored scorpion emperor has an armor skill which reduces the damage it receives by 5%. This pet specializes in defense, and can protect the tamer by bearing attacks at the vanguard. When the Armored Scorpion Emperor appeared, Luo received a system notification that, because of his Necromancer class effect, his pet's loyalty meter would be increased to infinity. His pet could devour any 10 normal grade pets to level up to become elite grade, and the experience required to upgrade his pet is reduced by 50%. Seeing the notification, Luo said, the reason beast tamers find it hard to grow is that the pets require the tamer's experience to level up. In the early stages, it takes double the experience. In later stages, when there are more pets, the demand increases exponentially, making it impossible for ordinary people. Luo smiled and added, What a shame, the thing I don't lack the most now is experience points. Luo instructed the system to fully upgrade his armored scorpion emperor. The pet's D-rank skill, armor, upgraded to A-rank and turned into steel body. This A-rank skill can decrease the damage received by the armored scorpion by 30%. The man who came to attack Luo was shocked to see his pet armored scorpion emperor. He asked Luo, what exactly are you saying? It's impossible for a normal beast tamer to possess such power. While petting his armored scorpion emperor, Luo said, from the moment I received the mission, I felt people spying on me in secret. You guys must be the assassins who rely on concealment to prey on isolated individuals, and both of us happen to have the same mission. So all of you plan to ambush me at the last critical moment and harvest the scorpion king. Hearing this, the man realized he had kicked an iron board this time. He understood that he had to run, otherwise, he was going to die. Luo smiled and ordered his pet to demonstrate its capabilities. As Luo commanded, the armored scorpion emperor moved very fast and attacked the man's stomach with its huge pincers. The man fell to the ground and begged Luo not to kill him, but Luo didn't want to. He told the man, in this world where the strong prey on the weak, if they wanted to prey on others, they must be prepared to be preyed upon. After that, Luo's armored scorpion emperor attacked the man and killed him. NPC Carl was very happy and thanked Luo for avenging him, saying, From this day forth, I will be Luo's good brother. The system congratulated Luo for completing the mission, Destroy the Scorpions. As a reward he received 500 experience points and one silver coin, along with 3 million units of alternate energy. Luo obtained a magic necklace and armored leggings as equipment. After receiving 500 experience points, Luo leveled up and became level 4. His health increased by 30, and mana by 12. He also received 6 free attribute points. His next level up will require 2,000 experience points. After leveling up, Luo checked the new equipment he had acquired. The first piece was a magic necklace, a 1-star item that increases mana by 5 points and is refinable. The requirement to wear it is level 4. According to legend, this necklace is made of magic 
and wearing it grants the wearer powerful magic abilities. The second piece of equipment was armored leggings, also one star and refinable, with a requirement of level 5. It increases physical defense by 7 and magic defense by 6, offering the wearer a significant amount of protection. Seeing the magic necklace, Luo said, This is like a sleepy bug meeting a pillow. An equipment that adds mana came just when I am urgently lacking it. He instructed the system to fully upgrade it. The system upgraded the magic necklace 125 times, costing a total of 2,499 alternate energy, and congratulated Luo on receiving the golden equipment, Sacred Domain, Source of Magic. The armored leggings were upgraded 158 times, costing a total of 2,985 alternate energy, and Luo received the golden equipment, Armor, Hero's Protection. Wearing both pieces of equipment, Luo noted that with these two items, the armored Emperor Scorpion and he could level up to level 5 even quicker. But just as Luo started to walk, he was surprised by a notification, an area notice from the system. It announced, All class shifters in Doomsday Town please take note. A hidden secret realm, level 5 Doomsday City, has appeared near Doomsday Town. This secret realm will last for one hour. Please head to the secret realm to challenge it. The first person to clear the secret realm will receive generous rewards. Everyone was surprised to see a level 5 secret realm. Seeing that it wasn't too far, Luo confidently said, With my current abilities, this initial clear reward will be mine. Meanwhile, at the entrance of the secret realm, some people had already gathered. A black-haired man was asking if anyone wanted to join him, saying it was rumored that the reward for the initial pass of a secret realm was high, and they could make a fortune. Another man disagreed, saying, Entering a level 5 secret realm at our level is suicide. We'll earn the money at the cost of our own lives. The first guy explained that that's why he suggested they should form a team. Luo also arrived there and was surprised to see that there were quite a few people wanting to challenge the secret realm. As Luo approached, a man pushed him aside, making way for his president who was wearing full-body golden armor. Seeing the gold-armored guy and his man's behavior, someone asked, Who does he think he is, acting all high and mighty? To which another man replied, that gold-armored guy is Liu Yao. He's the son of the richest man in Linhai, Louis Yue. The Liu family owns the three largest drugstores in Linhai City, and his net worth is as high as billions. Mr. Liu has always been high profile. A full set of one-star equipment as his subordinate costs tens of thousands. As they were talking, the girl who came with Liu Yao recognized Luo as Zhang Yue and asked him why he was here. From Zhang Yue's memories, Luo also recognized that girl. She was the ex-girlfriend of Zhang Yue and her name was Lin Yuer. Lin Yuer approached Luo and tried to insult him, saying, An ordinary beast tamer like yourself who can't even pay rent, surely you don't plan on entering a level 5 secret realm, right? Luo got angry, and asked her if that was a problem. Lin Yuer was shocked, thinking, What's up with him? Shouldn't he be begging me to give him another chance like before? She tried to show Luo his place and hugged Liu Yao, saying, Only strong men like our brother Yao are qualified to pass this secret realm. You of all people shouldn't have such wishful thinking. Liu Yao also hugged her to show Luo and said, It feels bad to be dumped, doesn't it? If you ask me, people should be self-aware and realize that there's no point in holding on. But Luo didn't care what they did. Lin Yuer is just a worn-out shoe to me. You can take her if you like. As for the secret realm, the ones with wishful thinking are others. When Luo put Lin Yuer in her place, she became extremely angry and shouted, Zhang Yue, what nonsense are you spouting? Brother Yao, look at his arrogance. Hurry and teach this guy a lesson. Luo smiled upon seeing her anger, and advised her to cherish her life first. Hearing that, Lin Yue became even more enraged, exclaiming, What a bluff! He's just a piece of trash! She insisted, but Liu Yao felt something strange. He noticed that Luo's rank and class weren't clearly visible, as if they were deliberately hidden. Uncertain of Luo's strength and not wanting to engage recklessly, Liu Yao decided against confrontation, saying, I'm in a hurry to enter the secret realm and have no time to waste with you. I'll spare your life this time. As he headed into the secret realm, Liu Yao attempted to flaunt his wealth again, asking, Brothers, do you have your resurrection scrolls? Enter the secret realm with me, and you'll get the initial pass. All the men accompanying Liu Yao confirmed they had the resurrection scrolls, and happily entered the secret realm with him. When they left, a man felt pity for Luo. He placed his hand on Luo's shoulder and said, Just give up, we're poor losers. We're no better than these second-generation rich people. But Luo didn't care and told the man that if he also felt like a poor loser inferior to others, he should find ways to make himself stronger. Luo knows the owner of his body, Zhang Yue, is poor, but that has nothing to do with him. Hearing this, the man thought Luo was still pretending, 
a man asked the others if they heard that everyone in Liu Yao's party has a resurrection scroll worth 3,000 yuan each. Another man said, as expected of the rich second generation, it's said that you can use up to two scrolls within seven days, which is equivalent to having three lives. It seems like the initial pass will belong to the Supreme Guild, but Luo didn't think so. He knows that in the secret realm, one must pass through Lord Monsters, and with Luo's current strength, this is more than enough to deal with small mobs, but he won't be able to defeat the final Lord Monster. So, unless the Armored Scorpion and Luo both reach Grade 5, and Luo upgrades the equipment and skills, he doesn't stand a chance in the duel. Understanding all that, Luo didn't go into the secret realm and left from there. On the other side, Liu Yao and Lin Yue'er entered the secret realm. Still angry at Luo, Lin Yue'er said, Brother Yao, he bullied me like that. So why aren't you avenging me? Liu Yao told her that there were too many people. If someone had the intention to tarnish the Liu family's reputation by saying that he, Liu Yao, killed class shifters on purpose, it would be a great loss. He told her to relax, saying he will make that useless beast tamer kneel in front of her and apologize sooner or later. Hearing that, Lin Yue'er became happy and thanked Liu Yao, saying, I knew you would treat me the best. On the other hand, Luo went into the forest to hunt monsters. He attacked a monster with a fireball dealing 269 critical hit. A system notification informed Luo that his pet armored scorpion emperor had upgraded to grade 5. Luo understands that the pets of an ordinary beast tamer need the same amount of experience as their owner, but thankfully, a necromancer's pet upgrades only require half. In the early stages, Luo only needs to kill a few small mobs to quickly upgrade the armored scorpion emperor. Luo was continuously using fireballs and killing all the monsters that came his way. Some hunters were watching Luo kill those monsters easily. One of them recognized Luo saying, Isn't that the poor loser who was fighting with Liu Yao just now? Turns out he's this powerful? He killed a level 5 scorpion instantly. We made a mistake. We shouldn't have ridiculed him. After killing all the monsters from that area, Luo left for a different area. But some girls blocked his way when they saw Luo's strength. They tried to charm Luo with their beauty, saying, Can I be your girlfriend? I promise to do anything you want and never betray you. But Luo didn't even look at them and left from there. After some time, when Luo was going to hunt more monsters, suddenly a system notification came telling all Doomsday Town class shifters to be cautious, because the level 5 secret realm Doomsday City would close in 10 minutes. Seeing the notification, Luo thought, since I have upgraded the defense of my armored scorpion, it'll serve as a human shield in front of me while I focus on dealing damage. Now the armored scorpion emperor's loyalty is unlimited. It has upgraded to grade 5, and all its stats have increased. It also has a rank A steel body passive skill that lowers the damage that the armored emperor scorpion receives by 30%. The armored emperor scorpion, which specializes in defense, can protect the tamer and bear the attacks for the master at the vanguard. All this, Coupled with equipment that quickly restores mana, my fireball skill can achieve continuous fire, improving the efficiency of killing monsters. So 10 minutes is more than enough to clear this secret realm. Thinking that, Luo entered the teleportation portal. Inside, Liu Yao's party was still fighting with the monsters. Almost all the members of his party had died in the fight. Injured and angry, Liu Yao shouted, I was just a little short of defeating the Lord Scorpion. Another member of Liu Yao's party, observing the Grade 7 Lord Monster said, President, we, a group of Grade 2 class shifters, are just here to make up the numbers, aren't we? Lin Yue'er approached Liu Yao and exclaimed, Brother Yao, the monsters in this secret realm are too strong. We need to put our lives first. Another guy agreed with Lin Yue'er saying, We should use the resurrection scrolls quickly and leave before the monsters catch us, or else we'll die. While they were discussing, Liu Yao suddenly felt someone's presence. Looking up, he saw someone standing on top of a mountain cliff. Upon closer inspection, it was Luo. Annoyed, Liu Yao asked Luo, You're just a grade 5, aren't you afraid of dying? But Luo didn't reply and just laughed at him. Seeing Luo's laughter, Liu Yao grew even more infuriated and shouted, What are you laughing at? I'll teach you a lesson you won't forget. Seeing him that angry, Lin Yue'er tried to calm him down, saying, Brother Yao, there's no way a poor guy like him could have the money to buy a resurrection scroll. He'll just die. Liu Yao's underling told him that the monster was catching up, and they needed to get out of there first. They used the teleportation scrolls to escape the secret realm. While teleporting, Liu Yao called Luo an idiot who overestimates himself. He told Luo, You'd better die in the secret realm and save me the trouble of doing it myself. After they left, Luo sighed in relief, saying, They finally left. I don't have to put up with those pesky brats. Subsequently, the system welcomed Luo to the level 5 secret realm Doomsday City 
and informed him that the quest was to kill the Secret Realm Guardian, the Armored Scorpion Lord, which is a physical type level 7 Lord monster. Just as the system's explanation ended, the ground beneath Luo's feet cracked, and the Armored Scorpion Lord emerged. The Armored Scorpion Lord is a level 7 monster with 80 physical attack, 55 physical defense, 50 magic defense, and 1,149 health. It also possesses an armored skill called Collision. Upon seeing the armored Scorpion Lord, Luo remarked, As expected of the Scorpion Lord, he's different from those minions. His health alone is several times that of theirs. He summoned his armored Scorpion Emperor, ordering it to attack. The Scorpion Emperor struck the Scorpion Lord with its huge claws, dealing 22 health damage. Impressed by the effectiveness of the equipment and skill of the armored scorpion, Luo prepared to cast his fireball. He used his super fireball skill and threw three fireballs at the scorpion lord, achieving a critical hit that dealt 206 health damage and caused the scorpion lord to lose an additional 45 health from burning. The scorpion lord, now furious, jumped to attack Luo with its huge claws, but Luo dodged and his scorpion emperor grabbed its claws to stop it from moving. Luo then channeled a large amount of mana into his staff, and made a fireball to attack the Scorpion Lord. He used his super fireball skill and launched six continuous fireball strikes at the Scorpion Lord. The fireballs hit the Scorpion Lord on the head and injured it, causing its head to bleed. In anger, it roared loudly and attacked again with its claws, but Luo dodged this last attempt. After that, the Scorpion Lord lost all its health and died. Luo stood atop the Scorpion Lord's corpse and said, It was easy. Immediately, a public system notification announced, Congratulations. Class Shifter Zero, for the initial pass of the Secret Realm Doomsday City, you have obtained a Black Iron Level Secret Scroll. Everyone was shocked that someone had actually passed, when they realized the one who passed the Secret Realm was called Zero. Everyone was surprised, asking, he's so strong that he actually cleared the Level 5 Secret Realm. Lin Yuer and Liu Yao were the most shocked. Lin Yuer asked Liu Yao, right now, everyone's only grade 1 to 3, and the guardian monster of this Level 5 Secret Realm must be at least grade 6-7. So how did someone kill them? Liu Yao told Lin Yue that the announcement appeared just a few minutes after her ex-boyfriend entered. Hearing that, Lin Yue was shocked. She couldn't even imagine that it could be Luo. She told Liu Yao that it was impossible, saying, You also saw that Luo hid his ID at that time and didn't even have a pet. So how could one person defeat a grade 7 monster? Liu Yao also didn't want to accept that he was weaker than Luo. When Lin Yue mentioned this, he immediately agreed, telling her, You're right. Some other people must have gotten involved. Liu Yao then stood up and declared, The one who was able to kill the Lord Scorpion must not be an ordinary person. He ordered all his men, I want you to find this person with the ID name Zero immediately, no matter the cost. Have him join Liu Yao's Supreme Guild and work for us. In unison, all of Liu Yao's underlings shouted, Yes sir. When Luo killed the Armored Scorpion Lord, it dropped many items. Luo was thrilled to see that the drop rate of Lord Monsters was higher than that of ordinary ones. Among the loot were copper coins, blueprints, equipment, and most importantly, scrolls. Luo got a level 5 secret scroll. The quality of the scroll was black iron level, and it would consume 1000 alternate energy points to upgrade to the bronze level. After opening it, Luo would receive a guaranteed amount of silver coins and a black iron level bounty mission. Everyone was surprised to see that Luo got a secret scroll. One person remarked that since the emergence of the alternate world, the secret scroll had only appeared ten times in the first world. Another person noted that the secret scroll was impressive but lamented its low level. One eager buyer even offered to purchase it saying, I'm willing to buy the secret scroll for a high price. Message me privately if you see this. Another guy offered $3,000 to buy it from Luo. Well, a secret scroll could be upgraded with a few thousand dollars. But for Luo, it was just a one-click upgrade. He upgraded the scroll, and a system notification announced, 1,000 alternate energy points consumed. Congratulations on upgrading your secret scroll to bronze level. 2,000 alternate energy points consumed. Congratulations on upgrading your secret scroll to silver level. As the scroll continued upgrading, it reached king level. Luo thought that since there had never been a silver level secret scroll in the first world, if it were to hit the market, it would probably cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. For ordinary class shifters, that would undoubtedly be a large amount of money but Luo's goal was to pass through these alternate worlds. Thinking this, he used the level 5 king level secret scroll. A system notification announced, you've used level 5 king level secret scroll. Congratulations on obtaining a gold coin and a bounty mission. Rescue survivors. Please complete the task within the limited time, and you'll receive generous rewards. Luo was surprised. 
wondering what kind of king-level bounty mission was just about escorting an NPC. Confused, Luo checked the details of his rescue survivor's king-level bounty mission. Its difficulty was 100. The mission description stated, Darkness covers the earth, monsters resurrect, and mankind faces disaster. In the first alternate world, nightmare source, find the survivor Aelin, bring her to the safe zone in Doomsday Town. Rewards were unknown, and the time limit was 12 hours. If the task wasn't completed within this time, Luo would fail, and this task would disappear permanently. Seeing the time limit, Luo immediately checked the mission location and found that it was in level 10 Berserk Forest. Luo was surprised to see level 10 showing on the map, as he was only level 5. Luo also knew that wild boars appear in Berserk Forest. Wild boars are normal grade level 10 monsters with 100 physical attack, 68 physical defense, 65 magic defense, and 720 health points. They also have a violent dash skill. Luo knew that a wild boar in a violent state shouldn't be messed with. Before approaching one, one should consider whether they can withstand an impact of 500 keelers. Moreover, the wild boars usually appear in groups, so it may be difficult to deal with them. But Luo set that aside, and decided to find Aelin first. In the berserk forest, a little girl named Aelin was running away as a wild boar chased her. While running, she was crying and asking the wild boar why it was chasing her. But suddenly, there was an explosion around the wild boar. It was Luo who used his fireball spell to kill the wild boar, and save little Aelin. Aelin called Luo, brother, asking if he was here to save her. Luo said yes. When Luo found little Aelin, a system notification reminded Luo that the time remaining to complete the mission was now only 10 hours. After the notification, the whole berserk forest was filled with the roars of wild boars. Luo wondered if this was related to the mission, because as soon as he found Aelin, the wild boars in the forest started to get restless. Suddenly, a wild boar came running to attack them. Luo moved fast, dodged with Aelin, and used a fireball to attack that wild boar. When Luo attacked, the wild boar lost 123 health and continued losing more due to a burning effect. However, that wild boar was not alone. Luo saw tens of wild boars surrounding him. Noting the minimal damage from before, Luo realized these wild boars were tough. Even his mythical class, equipped with a gold attribute staff and an A-rank fireball, barely made a dent. Luo knew that if Ailin died here, the mission would fail. Thinking quickly, he summoned his armored scorpion emperor from his shadow, which roared loudly and immediately engaged the wild boars in battle. From behind, Luo readied his super fireball skill. He then hurled a fireball at the wild boars battling the armored scorpion emperor. Killing a level 10 wild boar earned Luo 40 experience points and 100,000 alternate energy points. Pleased with the technique's effectiveness, Luo encouraged the armored scorpion, Come on, scrape off a few more and they can upgrade. Both Luo and the armored scorpion emperor charged at the wild boars, and with a solid attack, they killed three more, gaining 120 experience points and 300,000 alternate energy. However, continuously using the fireball was depleting Luo's mana, and the boars kept coming non-stop. Seeing Luo's struggle, Little Island asked if he was okay. Luo reassured her, saying he would definitely bring her back. Suddenly, a wild boar sneaked up from behind and charged at Luo using its violent dash skill. Before the wild boar could inflict more damage, Luo hit it with a powerful fireball. The wild boar was engulfed in flames but survived unscathed. Luo fell back, relieved that his health was relatively high. Otherwise, he might have been knocked out. Luo noticed that his armored scorpion couldn't hold out much longer. He never thought this bounty mission would be this difficult. Just before the wild boar could attack again, it collapsed and died, allowing Luo to gain its experience points and level up twice in one go. Luo became level 7, and his health and mana increased by 15. He also gained three free attribute points. Now a level 7 mythical core class necromancer, his intelligence was 26, affecting magic attack. His agility was 15, affecting speed and crit damage. His spirit was 15, affecting mana. His stamina was 15, affecting defense, and his constitution was 10, affecting health. His magic attack power was 164, physical defense power was 18, magic defense power was 19, health was 230, and mana was 192. He had 2,000 trillion alternate energy. Luo was thrilled to level up twice in a row. In an emergency, he immediately upgraded his attack power. He also wore a ring obtained from defeating the Scorpion King, a one-star quality level 7 Glory Lord Battle Ring, which increased attack power by 35 and added 3 to strength. It also had a penetration effect that weakened an enemy's defense by 20 points. After upgrading his stats 
and wearing the Glory Lord battle ring, Luo's strength increased, and he cast a huge fireball. He hurled the fireball at the wild boars, causing a massive explosion that killed many. Pleased with the effect, Luo exclaimed, It's great! Compared to only doing damage after seven or eight shots, now I can kill a wild boar with two fireball shots. After that, Luo moved quickly and killed all the wild boars that had previously surrounded him. He cast multiple fireballs at once, killing all the wild boars in one go. He gained 1.5 million alternate energy and 600 experience points. Luo was exhausted after using so many fireballs, but finally got rid of the group of wild boars. Now, as long as Aelin was sent back to Doomsday Town, his task would be complete. But before Luo could even rest, someone in golden armor approached him asking, You didn't die in the secret realm? It was Liu Yao and Lin Yue'er, both of whom had the Sword Shield Warrior Supreme Sun and Supreme Moon titles. Seeing them, Luo became angry and told them to get lost, as he didn't want to waste time bickering with them. Both of them were there to confront Luo. Pointing at Luo, Lin Yue'er said, Brother Yao, you're a level 5 elite with golden equipment. Not many newbies can compete with you right now. Hurry up and teach him a lesson for me. Liu Yao drew his sword and told Luo, You got lucky last time. I spared your life but now it's time to pay up. Luo became very angry hearing that. He glared at them and said, You want to kill me? Bring it on! Liu Yao immediately lunged to attack Luo with his sword, saying, Let's see which is more brutal, your words or my sword. He aimed a full force attack at Luo's shoulder, but his attack couldn't even scratch Luo, let alone kill him. Liu Yao was shocked, asking, How is this possible? But Lin Yue was even more shocked, thinking, Luo is just an unarmed beast tamer. How could Brother Yao not beat him? Luo laughed and asked Liu Yao, Are you done? Because now it's my turn to attack. Luo took out his Glory Lord battle ring and got ready to cast a powerful fireball. After combining the power of the rings, Luo created a huge fireball to throw at Liu Yao. Seeing the fireball, Liu Yao became scared and pleaded with Luo, I'm the president of the Supreme Guild and the eldest son of the Liu family, the richest man in Lin Hai. If you're going to take a shot at me. But Luo didn't let him finish his sentence and hurled the fireball at him. The fireball directly hit Liu Yao, sending him flying. Liu Yao couldn't believe he lost to Luo with just one strike. Liu Yao died and his body disappeared, leaving only his golden armor behind. Luo received a notification saying, Professional Supreme Star Glory initiated an attack on you. The other party is now grayed out. If you kill a grayed out professional within 10 minutes, you won't receive sin points. Seeing the notification, Luo laughed and called Liu Yao a fool. It is known that in the other world, the names of professionals are usually white. When these professionals maliciously attack other white professionals, the aggressor will be grayed out for a short period. During this period, the victim's resistance is considered legitimate defense and doesn't accumulate sin points. If the victim fails to resist and is killed, the assailant becomes red and gains 100 sin points. In that case, under the alternate world rules, entering the safe zone is forbidden, and you can't exit the world unless you kill enough monsters to get rid of the sin points or you wait for your death. When a professional dies, not only do they lose their level and experience, but they also leave behind a large amount of equipment and props. When Liu Yao died, he left his golden armor, so Luo picked it up. Lin Yue was shocked to see that Luo killed Liu Yao with one strike. She wondered when Luo had become so powerful. When she saw Luo coming toward her, she became scared and backed off, asking him, What do you want? She was very scared because she could only use two resurrection scrolls within seven days and she had already used one to escape from the secret realm. If she used it now, she wouldn't have another chance later. Thinking all this through, she called out to Luo, Ever since we split up, I have never forgotten you. But Luo didn't even look at her and walked straight through with little Aelin. Luo glanced at Lin Yue'er and thought, Just now, Lin Yue'er didn't make a move. If she had made a move on Aelin, the mission would have been affected. Now I can't waste my time on these unimportant guys. Thinking that, Luo left from there with little Aelin and didn't kill Lin Yue'er. But even that made Lin Yue'er angry. She gritted her teeth in anger, saying, How dare you ignore me, Luo? Just wait for me. After that, Luo went into the safe zone and left little Aelin at her home. She thanked him for saving her. Then, immediately, a system notification came congratulating Luo on completing the King Grade Bounty Mission, Rescue Survivors. The completion reward was 10,000 experience points, 20 silver coins, 20 super silver coins, and 5,000 energy points. He also acquired equipment called the Ice Stick, a skill book called Small Ice Cone Technique, and a normal grade pet egg. After getting that many experience points, Luo leveled up again. His life stat increased by 30, mana by 12, 
and he received 6 free attribute points. His current level is 8, and his next upgrade requires 9500 experience points. After getting all the items, Luo decided to check his ice stick equipment and summon it from his inventory. The ice stick is a level 8, 2 star quality, white attribute weapon. It increases magic attack power by 25. It's a stick with great ice power. When its attribute exceeds the blue grade, it'll have powerful freezing damage. After reviewing the ice stick's details, Luo asked the system to refine it. The system refined the ice stick 144 times with one click, consuming a total of 22,356 energy points. The system congratulated Luo on obtaining the golden attribute destroyer Frost Scepter. He was happy seeing this more powerful staff, saying, The higher the quality of the equipment, the more energy is consumed for refining. Fortunately, no matter how much, it's not a problem for me. Suddenly, Luo remembered that among the rewards he had just received, there was also a pet egg. Looking closely, Luo saw that this green egg was just a normal grade pet egg. He checked his inventory and realized that he already had many eggs in his inventory. It turns out Luo had also collected a lot of common pet eggs while battling the monsters. Not interested in those eggs, Luo decided to feed them all to the armored scorpion, whose eyes lit up at the prospect. Just as Luo fed the eggs to the armored scorpion, system notifications popped up saying, Your normal level pet armored scorpion with 10 evolutions left has devoured your normal level pet frenzied boar. The current evolution value is 1 out of 10. Just like this message, Luo received multiple notifications as the armored scorpion devoured more and more eggs. After the armored scorpion devoured all the eggs, another system notification congratulated Luo on the evolution of his pet. Luo's normal level armored scorpion had evolved into an elite level silver armored scorpion. The color of the armored scorpion changed to silver as it evolved. The armored emperor scorpion is a normal level physical defense type monster bound to Luo. Its loyalty is at 100, which decreases by 10 points each time a pet dies. Loyalty cannot be restored, and when it reaches zero, the pet will rebel. Currently, the armored scorpion is level 8, and the experience needed to level up is 100. It has an iron armor passive skill. Silver armor defense reduces the damage taken by the iron armor scorpion by 5%, and increases the silver armor scorpion's defense by 10%. It also has an anti-armor elite pet unique effect. When the silver armor scorpion takes damage, 30% of the damage will be reflected back to the attacker. Luo patted the armored scorpion saying, Not bad, a two-star stick and a silver armored scorpion, along with the golden equipment Liu Yao contributed earlier, should be enough to fight the first alternate world's ultimate boss. But before that, Luo said he needed to go back and replenish some supplies. Saying that, he opened the teleportation portal and left the alternate world. From there, Luo arrived in his apartment from where he had teleported before. Just as he arrived, his phone started ringing immediately. Luo picked up the phone, and on the other end, a doctor said, Mr. Zhang Yue, for the last time, I'd like to remind you that if you don't pay the 390,000 medical expenses that your brother Zhang Zhao owes, the hospital will stop all treatment for your brother. Luo told the doctor to give him the hospital's payment card number, and he would call them back in 10 minutes. He opened his inventory, thinking he would sell a few pieces of golden equipment and easily earn a few million. Helping the original owner save his brother could also be regarded as repayment for this body. But when Luo tried to sell them, he received a system notification warning him that all his equipment was bound and couldn't be traded or dropped. Luo was surprised to see that notification. It seemed to be the negative effect of the 10,000 times increase buff. Luo understood that now that these equipments couldn't be traded, and even if Luo sold all his existing silver coins, that would only be about 10,000, so he needed to find a way to make some money. So, he picked up his phone and started searching for any high-paying jobs. He saw a group chat for jobs. A guy said he was selling one gold coin from the 8th world for 2,000 yuan. Another guy wanted to hire someone to train his sister, since she was a first world newbie requesting a coach. That guy offers 200 yuan an hour, plus an additional 100 yuan for every level up. Asking, is there any powerful professional brother who can help train my sister? Luo knew that regular trainers charged by the hour, but the money received was too slow so he was not interested in teaching. While scrolling, he saw something that completely surprised him. It was a request from someone named Rimuro, offering a heavy sum of 300,000 yuan to hire him as a coach for Linhai City's first world's newest professional. Upon seeing that message, one user commented, there's no such thing as an outrageous sparring partner. It must be a scam. However, another user responded, it's impossible for it to be a scam because scammers can't pass the official verification of the bounty posting on the alternate world forums, right? But a user with a pig face account photo recognized the message and said, 
someone has posted this life-threatening post again. Confused, another user asked him to elaborate. The Pigface account user explained that this post appears every year when new professions are awakened, and it's said that everyone who accepts the reward dies without exception. Seeing that post, Luo immediately called the number, smiling and saying, a life-threatening challenge sounds kind of interesting. Luo's call was answered by someone sitting in a dark room. Luo asked the person about the coaching job for 300,000 yuan and what the conditions were. The person who posted the request, a woman, explained the conditions. First, the job was for someone who had just recently obtained their class. Second, the task was to guide the designated individual to complete the first world. Hearing this, Luo agreed, saying it didn't matter if it was the first world or the second world, but he requested 390,000 yuan for the job. The woman told Luo that after they were done, he could have 400,000 yuan. Pleased, Luo asked when they could start, and the woman told him they could begin in 10 minutes. She informed him that the person he had to guide would be waiting for him at the spawn point of Doomsday Town. The call ended. Just as the woman had said, 10 minutes later, Luo arrived at Doomsday Town. Luo thought to himself, making it past the first world is one thing, but bringing someone through it for 400,000 is worth it. He smiled and said to himself, it's a pretty good deal as long as the other person pays up. While looking around the entrance of Doomsday Town, he noticed a girl dressed in black clothes, her face hidden beneath a hoodie. Luo asked her if she was the one who needed a guide. The girl didn't speak, but simply nodded. While Luo was confirming that she was indeed the one, a guy noticed the girl in black clothes and asked others, isn't that the disastrous caster? Another guy looked at her and said, seems like it. Even if she's in different garb, everyone can tell. Surprised to see Luo beside the girl, one guy remarked, that weak-ass beast tamer? He wouldn't have taken on that quest, right? Looks like gold weighs heavier than their lives. Both Luo and the girl in black heard these comments, but Luo didn't care. He sent a request to the girl, asking her to form a team so that he could guide her through the world quest first. When the girl joined, Luo received a notification. In the notification, the girl's class and ID were hidden. It only showed that she had joined the team. It was suspicious, but Luo didn't think much of it, and immediately headed towards the dungeon. While they were on their way, Luo asked the girl if she was aware that to make it past the first world, they had to complete two prerequisite quests, defeating a thousand monsters and collecting ten coins. The girl in black clothes nodded again. Noticing that she was only level one, Luo explained the alternate world settings to her. He told her that she wouldn't be able to harm monsters five levels higher than herself. Even if Luo reduced their health to one HP, it would be useless. She wouldn't be able to kill them. So Luo took out his ice staff and told her that they would first complete the prerequisites and gain some levels along the way. When they arrived at the dungeon, a level 3 armored scorpion attacked them. Luo used his super ice pick to attack the monster, dealing 389 health damage. Seeing the attack power, Luo thought, while it's a skill I got from the previous quest, it's not as effective as fireball, but as a supportive skill, it's not bad. After freezing the armored scorpion in ice, Luo looked back and asked the girl to hurry up and finish it off. The girl was surprised at first, but then cast a spell. A purple flame emerged from her hand, and when it touched the ice trapping the armored scorpion, it dealt only one point of health damage. However, that single point of damage was enough to shatter the ice and kill the armored scorpion. The girl received three notifications of leveling up and was surprised to see that she had gained three levels at once. While she was still in a daze, another armored scorpion suddenly attacked her from behind. Luo noticed and shouted for her to watch out. But the girl didn't have time to react. Luo quickly jumped in and saved her. He immediately stood up and cast a super fireball spell, throwing it at the armored scorpion, which exploded and killed it. Luo looked around for any other monsters, but to the girl, he looked like the hero of her dreams who had just saved her from danger. However, her dream ended when Luo let go of her and coldly told her to get up, saying they were moving on to the next level. As Luo walked into the forest, he was deep in thought about the 400,000 yuan fee for this quest. Feeling a bit suspicious, he asked the girl how old she was. She didn't speak, but sighed and indicated that she was 21. Hearing this, Luo remarked, Everyone should have awakened to their class by 18, so you should have been able to get started three years ago. Why is your level still so low? Hearing his question, the girl suddenly stopped walking. Confused, Luo asked her what was wrong. The girl removed her hoodie, revealing a very beautiful purple-haired girl underneath. She first thanked Luo for his help, and then asked him to leave, offering to give him a partial refund later on, and requesting that he not tell her sister about this. Luo was surprised because he had assumed she couldn't talk. Luo then told her that he had already promised her sister, so he would take her through the first world, 
The girl, surprised, asked Luo if he hadn't heard what people were saying about her. She explained that she carried the Star of Calamity and was a vessel of disaster. Because of this, she would constantly bring trouble to anyone who accompanied her. She thought Luo would get scared and leave her, but he didn't care. He told her that he had been wondering what exactly a vessel of disaster was. The girl tried to explain, but before she could speak, a mocking voice interrupted saying, Disastrous caster is out here ruining someone else's life again. Luo looked in the direction of the voice and saw some thugs approaching. One of the thugs told Luo that the disastrous caster was exactly as the forums described. Anyone who took on her request would die a horrible death, but those who managed to take her life would get a huge boost of experience and alternate energy. The leader of the thugs ordered his men to charge, declaring, We're doing this for justice. The girl, scared, said, These people are five to six levels higher than us. We can't take them. They're after me, so just run. But Luo didn't agree with her. He pulled out his ice staff and said, Don't I have a say in this? And what about the 400,000? Before Luo and the thugs could start fighting, a third party intervened, commenting, Looks like a brawl is coming right up. It was Liu Yao and Lin Yue'er with their guild members. One of the thugs asked his boss, Isn't that the rich kid of that billionaire Lin Hai Liu Yao? He warned his boss that if Liu Yao joined in, they wouldn't stand a chance. The thug boss told him to keep quiet and approached Liu Yao saying, Brother Liu, we're just here to do the public a service. We're not here to get in your way. But Liu Yao told him to shut up and walked directly up to Luo, placing a hand on Luo's shoulder and angrily saying, We keep running into each other. Luo smiled and asked Liu Yao if he was there to give him more free gifts. He warned Liu Yao that if he died now, he wouldn't be able to use that revive scroll for seven days. However, Liu Yao didn't get provoked by Luo. He sighed and ordered his men to get him. All of Liu Yao's men drew their weapons and charged at Luo. Seeing them coming, Luo also prepared to fight. But Liu Yao, seeing Luo's reaction, got confused and asked, What's with this reaction? He then turned around and saw all his men charging at Luo. Angry, Liu Yao started hitting his men, shouting, You're misunderstanding me here. I told you to steal someone's look, not to steal Luo's look. After getting beaten, his men understood what Liu Yao meant and watching Liu Yao beat his own men, Luo got confused. Suddenly, Liu Yao's men surrounded Luo and the girl in black clothes. Luo got ready to fight, but instead of attacking, Liu Yao's men took out some presents and offered them to Luo. The girl in black clothes was shocked and asked, What is this? But the most shocked was Lin Yue'er, who thought Liu Yao had come to kill Luo. She asked Liu Yao, What's the meaning of this? But Liu Yao told her to shut up. He approached Luo and said, Luo, I know you're not afraid to use force, but I am so I would like you to accept these gifts to show my sincerity. With a big smile on his face, he told Luo that these were hand-picked gifts he had asked someone else to prepare. These are irreplaceable gifts, he said. And if you join my guild and serve me, then they'll all be yours for the taking. We can even negotiate your salary too. He offered Luo 500,000 a month in salary. Lin Yue'er and the thugs were shocked to hear the offer. Lin Yue'er stepped forward and said to Luo, for a poor sod who lives off eating dirt, this offer is something you won't be able to get even with 10 years of effort. You should listen to me and just join our guild and be on the winning side. She spoke as if she were doing Luo a favor, but inside, she was thinking that if she managed to recruit Luo, her brother Liu would be very pleased with her, and she would have a chance to lord over Luo as well, two birds with one stone. Hearing this, Luo smiled and said, I am a man who recognizes worth in those who are mightier than me. Perhaps you'd like to test how worthy you are with your strength? Maybe then I'll consider your offer. Lin Yue'er became very annoyed and asked, Are you insane, Luo? 500,000 a month. I bet you won't be able to earn that much in a year. What right does a broke guy like you have to reject this offer? With a calm expression, Luo replied, Birds of a feather flock together. If everyone's like you, wouldn't I be abandoning my pride to bark at someone's feet? This made her even angrier. Luo then walked toward them and said, If you're not going to fight me, then get out of my way because I'm a busy man. But Lin Yue'er didn't want to back off and tried to stop Luo. However, Liu Yao ordered all his men to let Luo go. After that, Luo left. Seeing this, Lin Yue'er became very angry and shouted at Liu Yao, asking him if he was just going to let Luo go. He's not even paying a bit of attention to us, she exclaimed. Liu Yao angrily looked at Lin Yue'er and asked, Are your ears working fine? Because I told them to let him go. Seeing him angry, Lin Yue'er calmed down. As Luo walked away, one of Liu Yao's hunters asked, This kid has already killed you once. You're generous enough to overlook that. But if he keeps up that attitude, we might as well. Before he could finish, Liu Yao punched him in the face saying, You know nothing. With a big smile on his face, Liu Yao told them, 
Some things are just precious for how hard they are to obtain. There's no meaning if it's too easy. Curious, Lin Yue hugged Liu Yao and asked, Weren't you out for Luo's blood, doing everything you could to get him killed until now? So what made you suddenly change your mind? He told Lin Yue that it was probably after Luo killed him last time. He asked her, Since Luo is a broke guy who can't even afford gold equipment, how did a beast Tamir like him manage to get such a high damage output? He explained that Luo was more than meets the eye, and Liu Yao must bring Luo to his side, in his guild, no matter what. Angry, Lin Yue thought, What do you mean by, more than meets the eye? I know you more than anyone here. That guy is just a broke idiot. Just you wait, Zhang Yue. You'll be on your knees the next time we meet. On the other side, when Luo and the girl reached a safe place, the girl thanked Luo for covering for her earlier. Luo told her to save it because he wouldn't get paid if she died just like that. With no hope in her voice, she told Luo that she didn't think he would be able to finish this. Confused, Luo asked her why she would even post in the forums if she had so little confidence. You could have just chosen not to show up. Why would you still bother to enter the alternate world? He asked. She replied, You don't get it. I gave up a long time ago, but my sister did not. She opened her information screen and told Luo to have a look to understand what the Vessel of Disaster means. Luo saw the information in the system window. The Disastrous Caster is a special class, and she is a Vessel of Disaster. Those who possess the Vessel of Disaster cannot perform killing blows on monsters alone. Only in a team will she be able to grow. But if any of them were to fall, they shall all fall, and her level will return to zero. If she were to dismiss the party, she would be the only one to receive the penalty. The Vessel of Disaster will be broken upon clearing the First World, while those who manage to slay her shall be rewarded with a huge sum of experience. Luo was surprised to learn that she belonged to a special class. He now understood that, aside from the core classes, there were special classes too. If people with special classes managed to overcome their limitations, they could instantly awaken to a high-level class, or perhaps even a mythological class. Unfortunately, this wasn't something an average individual could easily overcome. Those who failed would continue a cycle of suffering. The girl told Luo that ever since she awakened to this class three years ago, there had been over a hundred attempts to break free from its curse, but none had succeeded. She explained that, due to the way these settings worked, one couldn't form a team with someone who had a level difference of more than ten. And with that limitation, how could they ever hope to defeat the First World's boss? With no hope left, tears welled up in her eyes as she told Luo to just leave. But Luo wasn't ready to give up. He asked the girl what she would do if he told her it was possible. He assured her that he could take her through the First World. The girl was shocked at what Luo said. She immediately approached him, asking if what he said was true. She was desperate because, for three years, breaking this cursed class limitation had been nothing more than a dream. To be looked up to by others and make a name for herself were things she could only imagine. Now, she wondered if this could really be her chance. With a smile, Luo told her to stop talking because they had a world to get through. For the first world, the owner of the class must complete prerequisite quests before earning the right to challenge the world boss. The first is to kill a thousand monsters, and the second is to collect ten silver coins. Luo completed both challenges within a day. The purple-haired girl, Su Yan, was shocked to see Luo's power, wondering if this was what Luo was truly capable of. She couldn't believe that Luo managed to dispatch a thousand monsters so quickly, and brought her through the rest of the world quests. They had earned quite a bit from that too. Luo turned to Su Han and said, Now that we're done with the prerequisites, we can challenge the boss, right? Su Han was surprised but told him that she was fine with that. Luo noticed she seemed distracted, and asked her what was wrong. She told Luo that it was just that normal people aren't as strong as he is, and someone like him wouldn't even consider accepting her request. Luo smiled and told her that he wasn't that normal, he was middle class. Su Han was at a loss for words as she didn't expect that. Luo felt very embarrassed, realizing that it sounded a lot better in his head, and thought he should have avoided mentioning his wealth in real life. Seeing Luo embarrassed, Su Han complimented him saying it was very amazing. Suddenly, a system notification appeared, informing them that the first world prerequisite quests, collecting 10 silver coins and killing 1,000 monsters, were completed. Since the prerequisites were met, the system asked them to confirm the boss challenge. Luo clicked on the confirm button to start the boss challenge. The system began loading the first world nightmare source boss sector, and then a bright portal appeared in front of Luo and Su Han, leading to the demon abyss. Before entering, Luo looked at Su Han, and asked if she was ready. She was a little nervous, but didn't back down, and told him she was ready. With that, both of them entered the boss raid. As they entered, a red system notification appeared, telling them that they had entered the first world nightmare source boss sector, Demon Abyss. 
It informed them that the time limit for this boss fight was one hour. They had to defeat the boss, Berserker Swine King, within the hour. The one hour countdown started immediately, and the system warned them that those who failed to defeat the Berserker Swine King within the allotted time would be counted as defeated and would have to restart the world quest from the beginning. Seeing the notification, Luo took out some potions and scrolls and tossed them toward Suhan, telling her to take and use them. Suhan was surprised to see revival scrolls and instant recovery potions, and told Luo that these were all highly valuable items. Luo told Suhan that he was confident in taking on the boss alone, but there would always be unexpected factors, so it was better to be well prepared. Luo then summoned his armored scorpion, saying he would just use the armor he got from the drop, and what he received from Liu Yao, he would equip the heroic armor of the protector onto his silver armored scorpion. With all this, tanking the boss's attacks wouldn't be a problem. After equipping the heroic armor of the protector, Luo's armored scorpion turned into the silver armored scorpion. Its physical grade increased to elite, and it was now bound to its master, Zero. The silver armored scorpion is a defense type monster with 100% loyalty to its master. When loyalty decreases by 10% each time the pet dies, loyalty cannot be restored, and when it reaches zero, the pet will rebel. Currently, the silver armored scorpion is level 8 with 2 physical attack power, 74 physical defense, 65 magic defense, and 610 health points. Su Han was surprised to see the silver armored scorpion's stats, but suddenly, a loud sound came from behind. Luo smiled upon hearing that sound and said, Here it comes. The next second, the Berserker Swine King appeared right in front of Luo and Su Han. The Berserker Swine King's aura was very dominating, with long metallic front teeth that looked very dangerous. The Berserker Swine King looked very angry as it approached the intruders of its territory. The Berserker Swine King is a two-star boss with a physical level of 10, possessing 210 physical attack power, 140 physical defense, 130 magic defense, and 9,400 health points. It has Berserk, Wild Charge, and Deadly Stomp skills. As the ruler of the Nightmare Source, standing in the passage to the First World, those who attempt to cross its path and enter the Second World shall be smashed to smithereens by the Swine King. Seeing the Swine King's stats, Su Han became very scared. She tried to tell herself not to be afraid. Now was her chance, but she couldn't stop shaking in fear. We couldn't even beat it as a group, and now there's just the two of us. Seeing her so frightened, Luo understood that her repeated failures had turned into fear, so he decided to go alone. He told Su Han to stay back and provide support or healing to the scorpion when needed. Su Han asked Luo what he would be doing, and Luo smiled, telling her, I'm just here to clean up after the little piggy. Hearing Luo call it a little piggy, the swine king became furious and charged at them. Luo also charged at the swine king while casting his super fireball spell, throwing it directly at the swine king dealing 325 health damage. But when the smoke from the explosion cleared, Luo saw that the Swine King was completely unscratched. With its 9,400 health points, 300 damage was nothing. Seeing this, Luo said, As expected, bosses have thicker skin. It won't be easy to break through. The Swine King roared loudly and charged at Luo again. But Luo's silver-armored scorpion came from behind and smashed the Swine King's head into the ground with full force. The silver-armored scorpion dug its legs into the ground to prevent the Swine King from pushing it away. Then, Luo moved forward and used his continuous fireball skill to attack the Swine King, throwing multiple fireballs at it while it was pinned down by the scorpion. Luo thought that as long as the Swine King kept taking hits, he would be able to end it. But the Swine King had other plans. It used its wild charge skill and, with full force, sent the armored scorpion flying towards Luo. After breaking free from the scorpion, the Swine King roared loudly, glaring at Luo with anger. The armored scorpion stood up again, and seeing the Swine King's power, Luo said, Looks like it's not going to be that easy. The enraged Swine King used its reckless charge skill, its most powerful move, increasing its attack power by 50%. Su Han recognized the skill and screamed, telling Luo that he had to dodge it. The silver armored scorpion also prepared to defend, but Luo asked it to wait a bit. The Swine King got very close, but Luo still didn't attack, instructing the scorpion to wait just a bit longer. He was waiting for the swine king to get very close. When it was just a few centimeters away, when the timing was perfect, Luo immediately took out his ice staff and cast the super ice pick spell. Ice covered the entire ground, stopping the swine king in its tracks. Its face froze in the attack, dealing 400 health damage. Luo thought his attack had stopped the swine king, but suddenly Su Han screamed from behind, 
telling him that lower star bosses tend to have a 50% status resistance, so the effects of frost wouldn't last long. Just as she said, the Swine King immediately broke the ice and roared loudly, causing the whole dungeon to shake. Su Han told Luo that the Swine King was mad now, and from what she had heard, when the Boar King was in this state, it would start using Deadly Stomp. But before the Swine King could use its Deadly Stomp skill, Luo's armored scorpion attacked it from behind again, trying to smash its head into the ground. However, the Swine King was prepared and immediately used its stomping skill to counter the scorpion. Seeing this, Luo exclaimed, Not my 400,000! He quickly got ready to cast a powerful attack and asked Su Han to recover his scorpion's health. Su Han said, All right, and immediately raised her staff to cast a recovery spell. As Luo's silver-armored scorpion recovered, it used its huge claws to defend against the Swine King's attack. Su Han warned Luo that even though his armored scorpion was fully healed, it wouldn't be able to last long. They lacked the damage output needed to make up for the difference. But Luo didn't think so. He cast both ice and fire spells together and told Su Han, We don't need to wait that long. With this, it's more than enough. Luo unleashed his full power and cast the Dance of Fire and Ice spell at the Swine King, hitting it directly. The Swine King's body started to burn in flames, and then a huge ice wall with spikes formed around it, dealing even more damage. The Swine King screamed in pain, but because its lower half was frozen, it couldn't escape. The Swine King continued to burn in flames, and silver coins began to fall from its body. Luo smiled and said, Even a level 10, two-star rank monster can't withstand a heavy bombardment from a two-star golden equipment of a mythical class. Luo used his mana to amplify the power of the fire and hurled more fireballs at the Swine King. As the fire grew stronger, the Swine King's screams became louder and louder. Su Han was shocked, because she had never seen anyone use these two skills with such mastery. After burning in flames for a long time, the Swine King finally fell to the ground and died. A system notification appeared, congratulating Luo on taking down the two-star physical boss, Wild Boar King. He obtained 100% of the reward, gaining 6,000 experience points and 12 silver coins. He also received 16 pieces of rank 2 meat, which he decided to put up for sale. Luo also received a skill book, Berserk, which sacrifices 10% defense for a 5% attack boost for a 10 second duration. Luo decided to keep the skill book. The next item he obtained was the Magic Cloth of the Berserker. It is a level 10, 2 star, gold ranked item with spellcaster restrictions, meaning only a spellcaster can use it. It increases health by 320, and as an extra stat, it increases stamina by 5. It has a magic support effect. When receiving lethal damage, it will substitute mana for health to negate damage at a 2 to 1 ratio. The cloth is layered with magic, elegant yet violent at its core. Luo also received the War Ring of the Berserker, also a level 10, 2 star, gold ranked item with night restrictions. It increases physical attack by 70, and as extra stats, it increases strength by 5 and agility by 5. It recovers 55 health per damage dealt. The ring is bloodstained, and only fresh blood can sate its hunger. Luo decided to keep these two items for his armored scorpion. On the other hand, Su Han received a system notification congratulating her on breaking the class restrictions of the disastrous caster's class limitation, Vessel of Calamity. After breaking the class restrictions, she evolved into the core class of Taboo Sorcerer, which is an epic class. Seeing the notification, Su Han started to cry. She couldn't believe if it was real or if she was dreaming. She had actually managed to shed the disastrous caster status and evolve into an epic core class. While both Luo and Su Han were excited about their rewards, suddenly a public system notification announced that Class Shifter Zero and Su Han had defeated the world boss, Wild Boar King, and cleared the first world nightmare source. Everyone who saw the notification was shocked to find that they had cleared the first world in less than half a day. But when only Zero and Su Han's names appeared, people were even more surprised asking, just these two? Isn't there anyone else? Suddenly, a guy recognized Su Yan and told everyone that she had no combat capabilities whatsoever and had been dragging everyone else down. She was the one who required other people to escort her. This was the most shocking thing for everyone, that someone had been dragging Su Han along and took down the boss all by himself. Meanwhile, back at the boss dungeon, two portals, one red and one blue, opened up. A system notification informed Su Yan and Luo that since they had cleared the first world nightmare source, the second world, fortress besieged by undead, was now active. Looking at the portals, Luo thought, the red one leads to the second world, while I can return using the blue one. So, 
Let's solve the issue of putting food on my table first. With that, he headed toward the blue portal. Su Yan called out to Luo, asking him to wait and inquiring where he was going. Luo told her that he was going to ask her sister for his pay. After telling her this, he left the first world. Su Yan was shocked and amazed to realize that Luo was the mysterious class shifter everyone had been talking about. Meanwhile, at the fan building in the Linhai city center, where Su Yan's sister, Su Fan, has her office, Su Fan's secretary came in and informed her that she had received a call from Luo. Luo told Su Fan that he had completed the job, sent her his account details, and asked her to transfer the payment there. Su Fan told Luo to wait, saying she would confirm the details first and then arrange his payment. After the call ended, Su Fan muttered, It's been half a day, and they claim the quest is done just like that. These frauds are really something. But suddenly, Su Yan burst through the door with a bright smile on her face and told her sister that she did it. Su Fan was surprised and asked her to confirm. Su Yan told her that not only had she broken out of the Vessel of Calamity, but she had also evolved into an epic core class, Taboo Sorcerer. Su Fan was overjoyed, exclaiming that Su Yan's class was epic and adding, We've never had any class shifters reach that level in the history of the Fan family. Surely they must have sent plenty of help for that, right? Su Yan laughed and told her that it was just one man. Su Fan was shocked to hear it was just one man and immediately opened her laptop. She asked, Could that person be the hot topic right now? The rumored Zero? Su Yan confirmed that he was indeed Zero. Su Fan looked at the Hunter chat group and saw people talking about Zero. One person wrote, The Long Kingdom's hundred-year record of Moon Scary's clearing has been overtaken. Another commented, Looks like we've got a top ranker hailing from our country. Yet another said, The Long Kingdom will finally crush the Ephemeral Kingdom once and for all. A guy with glasses mentioned, the difficulty of the final boss of the first world appears to be tweaked. Did anyone notice any differences this year? A girl commented, Mysterious class shifter. Zero stomps the first world boss. Seeing all those messages, Su Fan smiled and said, Su Yan, you two managed to shatter records and become the first group of people to reach the second world. With the two of you on board, we'll be able to improve our position in this country. Su Fan immediately announced that they would hold an executive meeting. We have to recruit Zero to our Misty Rain Pavilion by any means necessary to clear the second world before anyone else, she declared. Sometime later, Luo received a call from his brother's hospital. They informed him that they had received his payment, and asked him to let the hospital know if he required anything in the future. The call confirmed that Su Yan and her sister had kept their word about paying him. Luo told the hospital that he would leave his brother in their capable hands and would do anything to ensure they could cure him. The hospital staff reminded Luo that his brother's condition was more severe than they had expected. He might have to remain there for further observation for the next few months, and the fee would be around 40 to 50,000. The hospital's attitude had completely changed when they found out that Luo had money, as they were ready to discharge his brother before when Luo didn't have money. Hearing that the fee was around 50,000, Luo started to regret thinking that if he had known this would be the case, he would have accepted that wallet-bleeding bastard's offer. He was referring to Liu Yao. Suddenly, Luo's phone started ringing. He picked up the call and greeted the caller. On the other side were the leader and other core members of the Misty Rain Pavilion Guild. They directly asked Luo if he was interested in joining the Misty Rain Pavilion Guild. Su Yan's sister, Su Fan, who was also there, introduced herself as the Vice Guild Master of Misty Rain Pavilion. She told Luo that they would cover his insurances and offer a base salary of $30,000 a month in addition to any bonuses he achieved. Luo smiled because this call came at a great time. He told them he would join them. Hearing this, both Su Yan and Su Fan were very happy. However, Luo then told them that he had one condition. They could request him for anything, or make him participate in major events, but they were not to interfere with his personal freedom. Hearing this, everyone's expression changed as this was hard to accept. A member of the Misty Rain Pavilion Guild asked what kind of demand this was, arguing that joining a guild meant committing oneself to the guild's cause, and if everyone decided to act on their own freedom, what purpose would they serve as a guild? Luo asked, Is that a no I hear? I guess the deal is off, and ended the call. All the members of the Misty Rain Pavilion were shocked and looked at the man sitting in the middle, Su Chen, CEO of the Su Foundation. People complained about how rude Luo was to hang up like that, arguing that having someone with no respect for the guild would be problematic. Hearing this, Su Chen asked Su Fan if this was the person she wanted to poach no matter the cost. Su Fan explained to him that Luo was the class shifter who managed to shatter their hundred-year record by defeating the boss of the first world and clearing it in less than a day. He was a once-in-a-century prodigy, so they must use this chance to secure him. Su Chen was still not convinced, 
but then Su Yan joined her sister and told her uncle Su Chen that Luo was really something else. Su Fan suggested that they could fulfill Luo's conditions first and then negotiate from there once he joins. Su Yan agreed with her sister, noting that after all, Luo did say he would participate in their activities. He wasn't completely on his own. After hearing them, Su Chen said, Very well then. But if Luo refuses to submit to authority, then we have no other choice. On the other hand, Luo was waiting for their call, thinking that Misty Rain Pavilion, ranked fifth among the guilds of Long Kingdom, should suffice. Not to mention, their monthly pay and bonuses should cover his brother's medical expenses too. While he was pondering this, his phone suddenly rang. When he picked up the call, the CEO of Misty Rain Pavilion told him that they could agree to his terms and asked when he was available to stop by their office and report to them. Luo told them that he preferred to work from home rather than the office. Since they were both in Linhai, the time zone shouldn't be an issue. The same goes for logging in. Su Fan was shocked to hear that, saying it would be difficult. Hearing that, Luo said, You can't do that? Before he could complete his words, Su Fan told him they could do it. They would go with that then. Luo smiled as everything was going according to his plan. Luo ended the call, thinking, Now that I'm done with the negotiations with the guild, I won't have to worry about income for now. Time to make progress with the alternate world. He opens the system, which asked him to please select the world he wished to enter. The first world nightmare source, the second world fortress besieged by undead. As Luo had recovered and was full of energy, he told the system to proceed to the second world. The red portal leading to the second world opened up in front of him. Luo went through that portal and entered the second world. It was nighttime in the second world when he entered. A system notification welcomed Luo to the second world. Fortress besieged by undead, informing him that he was at the safe gate zone Z, Narden Town. Another system notification told Luo about the second world. Fortress besieged by undead. The background of the second world is that it is the end of times as the world meets its end. Humans under the encroaching darkness were mutated. The mutated humans besiege the fortresses as zombies. As a fortunate survivor of Norden, Luo must cooperate with other survivors. Once the fortress is breached, there is nowhere to run. World Quest 1 is to get past the secret realm. Progress, 0 out of 1. And World Quest 2 is to participate in and succeed in repelling 3 waves. Progress, 0 out of 3. After completing the above quests, Luo may challenge the second world boss and enter the third world. Luo knows that the level requirement for the secret realm is at least 15, so he needs some levels before he can even think about it. As for the second one, he will just have to wait. While he was thinking, suddenly he heard someone shouting, Hurry! The next wave will be arriving soon. Luo looked in the direction of the shouting and saw that it was Captain Norris, who has a question mark over his head, indicating that he is an NPC. NPC Norris was angry, saying, Those damn zombies had to attack Norden now, of all times. We don't even have enough weapons in stock to supply our fellow brothers in arms. Luo saw that the whole place was in chaos. All the soldiers were busy with their work. He remembers that while Norden is the safe zone of the second world, it gets periodically attacked by waves of zombies, which certainly keeps things tense in a place like this. While Luo was looking around, he was approached by NPC Norris, who came to Luo and said, Young warrior, a battle is going to break out at any time. Will you head to the west of Norden and gather materials we can use to forge and maintain our weapons? It was a quest for Luo which he could accept or decline. Luo knew that there were a total of ten quests available at Norden, and this one was among the hardest and most time-consuming, with targets ranging from level 11 to 20. A system notification about this quest appeared. Resource gathering is a regular quest with 200 difficulty points. The quest's description stated that Norden's stock of weapons needed to be resupplied. Luo was to head west of Norden to the military base occupied by zombies and gather resources by killing them. The quest progress was zero out of a hundred. For this quest, Luo had to gather 100 fire cores, 100 ice cores, and 100 poison cores. The rewards for this quest included 100,000 experience points, 50 silver coins, 9,000 energy, random two-star equipment, and two skill books, or a pet egg. Seeing the notification, Luo smiled thinking this might well be the most rewarding of all quests. Once this quest was completed, he might as well be done with the entire world. Luo told NPC Norris to leave it to him. Norris was very happy to hear that, and thanked Luo. Luo then went to Norden's outskirts, where the former military supply base was, but everything was on fire. The whole area was surrounded by fire zombies, and there were hundreds of zombies walking everywhere. When Luo arrived there, he immediately summoned his armored scorpion, saying, Let's get started. He attacked a zombie with his super fireball, dealing 266 damage, and the burning damage increased by 50 more. When one zombie was attacked, 
Other zombies noticed Luo and charged at him while roaring. The zombies easily walked past the flames on the ground and jumped to attack Luo, but Luo's armored scorpion used its huge claws and crushed that zombie on the ground. Seeing zombies walk past his flames, Luo realized that not much damage could be done to these fire-resistant zombies. He then took out his ice staff and with a big smile on his face said, Let's see how long you can last. Luo stood back and ordered his silver-armored scorpion to take the zombies aggro. The silver-armored scorpion roared and charged at the zombies, grabbing them with its claws and gradually dealing damage. The armored scorpion was equipped with A-rank protective skills, a level 8 war ring of the berserker, level 8 boar pelted boots, and level 5 leg guard of heroes. Impressed by his armored scorpion, Luo said, having an elite monster like the armored scorpion around, equipped with all sorts of lifesteal and protective skills to sustain itself, there's no way these fire zombies can take it down. The ease with which it took down the zombies was a bit unsettling for Luo. Luo then raised his staff to use an ice spell, saying, Now, I will meet fire with ice. Saying that, he threw ice arrows at the zombie the armored scorpion was holding. The zombie was covered in ice, and its body was pierced by the ice arrows, killing it instantly. A system notification then informed Luo that he had killed a level 11 fire zombie, earning him 50 experience points and 110,000 energy. He also received one bronze coin. Luo was disappointed to see just one measly bronze coin, commenting on the low drop rate for these monsters. Seeing that this method of killing zombies was effective, Luo immediately prepared to cast more ice spells. He cast multiple ice spells at once, killing many fire zombies in one go. He gained many bronze coins and experience and leveled up. However, after all that effort, he only had 50 fire cores. Luo remarked, It's still a long shot when it comes to finishing the quest, especially with that abysmal drop rate. Feeling hungry, Luo decided to just log out and find something to eat for now, planning to pick up where he left off tonight. But suddenly, something roared loudly, surprising Luo, and the pressure around him became very heavy. Luo looked up to see what it was, and suddenly, a huge portal mixed with ice and fire opened in the sky. Seeing the portal, Luo said, Could that be the respawn timer for the Lord Monsters? When the portal fully opened, a huge monster emerged whose one side of the body was in flames, and the other half was covered in ice. This monster was a level 14 flaming ice zombie sovereign, a magic-type lord monster. Luo guessed correctly that lord monsters are too valuable. Knowing that he could get a good equipment drop or skill book from it right now, he started laughing. The zombie sovereign noticed him. Luo took out his ice staff, ready to fight. The zombie sovereign smiled, roared loudly at Luo to distract him from using his spell, and then punched the ground covering it with ice. Luo was shocked, and before he could do anything, his legs froze in the zombie sovereign's ice attack. This was a very bad situation for Luo because now he couldn't dodge the zombie sovereign's attacks. The zombie sovereign made an icicle spike and threw it at Luo with full speed. Luo somehow broke the ice and jumped to the side to dodge the icicle spikes, but could not completely avoid them. A system notification informed him that he had taken damage from the flaming ice zombie sovereign's icicle spike and lost 352 points of health. Luo immediately cast a mixed fire and ice spell from his staff and threw it at the zombie sovereign. The fire zombies sustained 168 damage and continued burning, while the ice from the attack took 150 damage and increased by 25. Seeing the low damage, Luo realized that in front of a dual elemental zombie of fire and ice, even if he had spells of both elements, he wouldn't be able to maximize their output like this. Luo admitted that this guy was his counter but suddenly the zombie sovereign created an icicle spike and threw it at Luo's armored scorpion. Luo was surprised that the zombie sovereign was attacking his silver armored scorpion. He looked back and was shocked to see the damage on the armored scorpion. The zombie sovereign didn't give him any chance and immediately cast a huge ice spell, smiling as it threw many icicle spikes at Luo's armored scorpion. From all those attacks, the armored scorpion died. Luo received a system notification saying, Unfortunately, your pet silver armored scorpion perished in battle. Please wait three hours at the revival pool, and you'll be penalized with negative one level, along with negative ten loyalty for the pet. Activating the effects of Necromancer, only one hour of wait is required. All penalties will be negated. Luo was shocked to see those notifications. Then, the zombie sovereign pointed its spell at Luo. Luo realized that this guy was on a whole other level compared to the Lord Monsters of the First World. As the zombie sovereign was about to attack Luo with its ice spell, suddenly a purple thunderbolt struck the zombie sovereign from the sky, dealing 138 damage to it. The one who attacked the zombie sovereign was Su Yan. Seeing her there, Luo called her Paycheck Lady 
as she is his boss's niece. Su Yan joined the fight telling Luo that she would help with crowd control, and asked him to keep doing his thing. Luo smiled because now he was not alone. With ice and fire spells, Luo started attacking the zombie sovereign, dealing 150 damage from each attack. Luo told the zombie sovereign that even if it resisted his attacks, he would just whittle it down. The zombie sovereign became very angry and tried to attack Luo, but Su Yan used her magic to recast Luo's fireball spell which covered the whole zombie sovereign's body in flames. Luo looked back and was shocked that Su Yan could do that with a fireball too. Then, Su Yan raised her purple staff and cast her ray of light spell. Purple light rings appeared above the zombie sovereign and started putting pressure on it. The zombie sovereign screamed in pain. Luo was shocked to see Su Yan's power. She used three skills and seamlessly connected them too. Luo wondered if this was the power of the taboo sorcerer class. Luo then raised his staff and simultaneously cast fireball and ice pick spells, throwing them at the flaming ice zombie sovereign. His spells hit the zombie sovereign directly, causing it to roar in pain. Luo's attack didn't stop there. Su Yan also joined in and used her skill to increase the power of Luo's spells. The whole area became covered in ice and flames. The zombie sovereign burned in those flames and died. A system notification congratulated class shifter Su Yan for her collaboration in taking down the level 14 flaming ice zombie sovereign. As a reward, they received 3,000 experience points, of which 80% was for the two-member group and 20% for the last hit. They also received 4.2 million energy points. Seeing the reward, Luo thanked Su Yan and the Zombie Sovereign, and decided to split the rewards 50-50. However, Su Yan declined, saying it was fine. She told Luo that she had just arrived herself to take on a quest, and they just happened to run into each other. She mentioned that she hadn't properly thanked Luo yet for getting her this far. Confused, Luo told Su Yan that her sister had already settled his bills for her. Su Yan told him that it was from her sister, not from her. With bright purple eyes, she looked at Luo and officially introduced herself as Su Yan, and asked for his real name. Luo thought for a second whether he should tell her or not, but eventually decided to trust her. He shook hands with her and introduced himself as Luo. After that, Su Yan suggested that since they were in the same guild, and both had taken on a collection quest, they should team up. It would be a lot smoother with more hands. Hearing her suggestion, Luo asked her about her class effects. With full excitement, Su Yan told Luo that all her crowd control skills would be upgraded into taboos, and their effects would last 30% longer, along with all her skills receiving a 30% cooldown reduction. Hearing that, Luo smiled as this explained how she had become so powerful. Luo thought that with that type of crowd control, it would certainly make his grind a lot easier, so he agreed to work together. He then turned around and started to leave. Confused, Su Yan asked him where he was going. Luo told her that he would head back to Norden and they could regroup in 10 minutes. Su Yan was very happy that she could now work with Luo. She looked at Luo and remembered telling herself in her childhood that she would marry whoever managed to break this curse of hers. Suddenly, she snapped back to reality and felt very embarrassed thinking all that. On the other hand, Luo, after walking, reached Norden Town. Before entering the town, he stopped and opened his inventory to check the rewards from killing the zombie sovereign. There were three pieces of equipment and a skill book as a reward. Luo received dashing boots of ice and fire, a two-star quality white attribute equipment, usable by mage and beast tamer classes. It increases physical defense by 55, magic defense by 50, and agility by 10. When wearing the boots, agility increases by 10 every time an attack lands, lasts for 5 seconds, and effects cannot stack. Luo immediately wore his dashing boots and said that he would sell the one-star stuff and keep the rest. Since Luo needed a stronger and more damaging skill, he decided to use the skill book. He channeled his energy into the skill book, and it started refining immediately. Then, a system notification announced a new skill. Luo obtained an A rank skill Super Flaming Bullet. It summons three flaming bullets, dealing 110% of magic as damage, costs 72 mana, and has a 5 second cooldown. When Luo acquired the skill, he immediately used it to check its effects. He was very happy with the result, and said that with his current speed and the new skill, he would be untouchable. Suddenly, a system window opened up in front of him. It was a message from Su Yan, inviting him to join the Misty Rain Pavilion Guild. Luo clicked on the accept button and said, All right, I'm in the guild now. I've taken care of the equipment and skill too. Let's head back. Then, after some time, both Luo and Su Yan went to another spot to kill zombies. Luo used his new super flaming bullet skill. His bullets dealt high damage, and their power increased as he shot three at a time. Everything that came in Luo's way burned, 
leaving nothing behind. Su Yan was shocked that Luo took down that zombie in one hit. She praised Luo, saying he was amazing. Luo told her that she was not bad either. She had great awareness and control, especially with her timing on the crowd control spells. Certainly, those pieces of equipment from Hera helped, he added. Hearing that, Su Yan smiled brightly and told Luo that her sister had arranged these for her, and they were very suitable for her class. Luo felt a bit jealous, thinking it must be nice to be so well equipped. Su Yan called Luo and asked him if he had been hiding additional effects of his equipment with such high attack power. She wondered if he might also have any mythical equipment. Luo laughed and told her that it had nothing to do with that. He was just a mythical class shifter. Su Yan didn't believe Luo and mentioned that the appearance of a mythical class shifter is usually accompanied by a strange phenomenon. Yet there hadn't been anything unusual this year. There had been no new record of mythical class shifters this year. Luo laughed and told her that it was up to her to believe it or not. After all, Luo's class couldn't be awakened by normal means. He told Su Yan that since they had taken care of fire and ice, all that was left were the poison cores. They should finish this off quickly. Su Yan agreed and asked Luo to head over to the poison zombie nest right now. Before going, they checked their quest window to see its progress. Their quest was a regular resource gathering quest with 200 difficulty points. Norden's stock of weapons needed to be resupplied so both of them had to head west of Norden to the military base occupied by zombies and gather resources by killing them. Their progress was at 100%. They had collected 100 fire cores and 100 ice cores, and now they only had to collect poison cores. The rewards for this quest included 100,000 experience points, 50 silver coins, 9,000 energy, random two-star equipment, and either two skill books or a pet egg. While they were checking, suddenly both of them received an alert notification. It was an emergency message from the Misty Rain Pavilion General. The general stated that they were currently undertaking a major activity, and everyone must assemble at the town within ten minutes. Those who were found absent would be kicked out. Luo and Su Yan were surprised by the sudden message. Seeing the notification, Su Yan asked, Now what is this Chen Jun up to, scaring everyone with such an announcement all of a sudden? Luo said, Su Yan, this Chen Jun guy sounds like someone with some authority. Su Yan told Luo that Chen Jun is the guild master of the Linhai city branch. His father and her uncle, President Su, were sworn brothers. That's how he got his current position. Luo smiled and said that since it was a guild activity, they should head over. Like that, both of them headed towards the location. On the other hand, at that location, a huge zombie covered in poison was roaring loudly. Some hunters were surrounding the poison zombie, so it smashed the ground, sending all those hunters flying. After being hit by the zombie, those hunters became unconscious, and then they all were struck by arrows in their chests. At that location, two fights were going on. In one, some hunters were fighting the poison zombie, and in another, some hunters were fighting among themselves. Chen Jun, who was fighting another hunter, shouted, Lin Yao, we're the ones who found this boss first. You can't just come in and take it from us. The one Chen Jun was fighting was Lin Yao, Luo's long-standing enemy. Lin Yao shouted back, Might makes right, you get me? You're just a tiny little guild. We'll stomp you. But suddenly, a huge magic circle appeared above both of them and started shooting fireballs at Lin Yao's guild members. The right-hand man of Lin Yao also got hit by those fireballs. Surprised and angry, Lin Yao turned around shouting, Who dares to get in my way? When he looked back to see who it was, he was shocked to see that it was none other than Luo. Luo, getting annoyed at seeing Lin Yao there, said, And now you're fighting over my guild for a boss? An hour ago, when the Misty Rain Pavilion and Poison Zombie were fighting, the hunters of Misty Rain Pavilion used shields to defend themselves and shot arrows at the Poison Zombie, but nothing was effective against it. It was destroying everything with its brutal force. Nothing could stop it. A hunter called his guildmaster, Chen Jun, and told him that without any crowd control, it was too risky to face the boss head on. Chen Jun asked what they were afraid of. He told them to wait for Su Han, maintain their formation, and thin out their numbers while they could. At last, both Luo and Su Han arrived there after receiving the notification. Seeing Su Han, a guy said, Is that the young lady of the Su family? Truly, an ice queen. High up in the lofty mountains. Another guy mentioned that he heard she had recently managed to break through her class limitation as well. When they saw Luo beside her, one guy commented that there was no way the guy next to her was the one who helped her out. Others agreed, saying, There is no way. That guy looks weak and plain. Hearing their conversation, Su Han turned to Luo and told him not to listen to them, and explained that she is not an ice queen. Luo was surprised and didn't know how to reply to her. Suddenly, Su Han realized what she had just said. She became very flustered and was very embarrassed. Seeing Su Han, 
Chen Jun was very happy that she was finally there, but he was surprised to see Luo with her, and asked her who he was, and why she was all alone with him. Su Han replied to Chen Jun that surely it was none of his concern who she hung out with. Chen Jun told her that it was only natural for him to worry about her, especially if they had any bad intentions. Su Han told him not to worry, saying she could differentiate between black and white just fine. She asked Chen Jun what the emergency was. Chen Jun addressed Su Han as young lady, and told her that the zombie fortress had refreshed and the boss had spawned. Su Han looked at Luo, and he agreed to go with her. She told Luo that it was the zombie king boss, which doesn't refresh often. So if they took down the boss after it spawned, it would be a big boost for their guild. Hearing that, Luo asked Su Han to let's go, saying it was his duty as a member of this guild after all. But Chen Jun stopped Luo and told him to stay here. Surprised, Luo asked him the reason. Chen Jun got angry and said, A mere beast tamer managed to slip his way into our guild, hoping to pick from our scraps. He warned Luo not to get too ahead of himself. When others heard that Luo was a beast tamer, they started talking. A guy said, I have heard those types are hard to train up, with their low growths and all. Another guy asked others to look at his equipment too, saying he's broke and is in their guild for the money. A guy called the Guild Master, telling him that if they let him go, they would waste their precious guild resources on the likes of him. Hearing them, Su Han got very angry, and asked them if they didn't know who Luo was. But before she could say more, Luo interrupted. He smiled and said, You're the president, it's up to you. Su Han hesitated for a second but then grabbed Luo's hand, and told Chen Jun that if Luo was staying, then she was staying as well. Chen Jun got scared, and asked Su Han not to be angry, telling her that he was just thinking of Luo, worried he'd die on the battlefield because he's too weak. He told Su Han that Luo could come, but he could only observe and not interfere, and he must bring his own resurrection scroll. Chen Jun then grabbed Su Han's hand, urging her to come along, saying that with her crowd control, they could manage their DPS without worry. As they left, Su Han asked Luo to wait there, promising she would be back for him. Luo knew that with a level 15 boss, it would take a while even with Su Jinyan's help. Despite their numbers, it was just a matter of time. He decided to see what the 5th rank guild was capable of. Then, when Chen Jun was losing against Lin Yao's guild, Luo joined the fight, using his spells to deal high damage against Lin Yao's guild. Members of Misty Rain Pavilion were shocked to see Luo, the beast Tamer, achieve so much damage. Lin Yao was surprised to find that Luo had joined Misty Rain Pavilion. Yu'er was also there, and when she heard Luo had joined another guild, she became very angry, shouting, Luo, you bastard! Brother Yao graciously extended his invitation for you to join the Supreme Guild, but now you're serving as Misty Rain's dog. I never expected you to stoop so low. Suddenly a purple magic circle appeared right above her, and from the circle, purple flames emerged and burned Yu'er. It was Su Han who cast that spell saying, It should be quieter now. Lin Yao then called Luo and asked him how much Misty Rain Pavilion had paid him, offering to pay him twice, no, triple, and even offering him the position of Vice Guildmaster. He could serve as CEO. Su Han became very angry hearing this, and shouted at Lin Yao, asking how he dared to try to poach Luo right in front of them. Luo approached Lin Yao and said, I'm a man of trustworthy integrity. While I'm still under Misty Rain Pavilion and taking on their tasks, I can't just jump ship like that. But then he smiled and told Lin Yao that no one knows how the future's going to play out. When the time comes, we will talk again. Hearing this, Lin Yao was pleased. As he was leaving, he told Luo that the Supreme Guild would always welcome him. Their doors were always open for his kind. After that, Lin Yao commanded his men that they were leaving. The right-hand man of Lin Yao was shocked and said, Sir, we almost got our hands on the boss. Are we giving up just like that? Hearing the complaints about the boss hunt, Lin Yao got angry and shouted, Who cares about the boss? He asked his men to look at the big picture. He explained to them, and all the members of Lin Yao's guild left the area. Su Han then came and thanked Luo for his help. Luo told her that she didn't have to thank him. It was just what he should do. While they were talking, suddenly a monster opened its red eyes. It roared and struck at Luo and Su Han. Luo pushed Su Han aside and dodged its attack. Both Su Han and Luo survived, but the ground they were standing on was completely destroyed. The monster that attacked them was the Zombie King of Despair, which was ten times the size of a normal human. Luo immediately took out his staff, saying, Let me have a go. Upon seeing the Zombie King of Despair, Luo immediately took out his staff and attacked it with his super fireball. Hunters from Misty Rain Pavilion were shocked to see Luo, a mere beast tamer, exhibiting such strength. They couldn't believe their eyes when Luo's attack reduced the zombie's health by one-third. Luo, invigorated, then instructed Su Han to do what she does best, 
Su Han promptly raised her staff and used her crowd control skill to amplify Luo's fireball, enveloping the zombie king in flames. Luo then cast his super flaming bullet and hurled it at the zombie king, roasting it in flames. The zombie king fell to the ground and died after just two attacks from Luo, whose power had increased from his recent rewards. A system notification congratulated Luo on defeating the level 15 zombie king of despair, awarding him 7,000 experience points and 1,500 energy. The hunters from Misty Rain Pavilion were amazed at how effortlessly Luo defeated the Zombie King. One hunter remarked that even if the Zombie King was weakened, it was still a formidable boss, and yet Luo finished it off effortlessly. He also noted that Luo even intimidated the Supreme Guild, earning respect from their young master, Liu Yao. Su Han thanked Luo, stating that if it weren't for him, the Supreme Guild would have stolen the boss from them. Luo humbly responded that he was merely fulfilling his duty as a guild member. The hunters were impressed by Luo, praising him as a role model. Later, they all returned to Nordine. Luo and Su Han were close, talking and smiling as they walked, followed by other hunters. Upon their arrival, Guildmaster Chen Jun angrily inquired why they were back so soon and whether they had secured the boss. A gray-haired man, who was present when Luo killed the zombie king, informed Chen Jun that Lady Su and Beast Tamer Luo had repelled the Supreme Guild and defeated the boss. Chen Jun, shocked, questioned whether it was possible for a beast tamer to possess such power. The gray-haired man affirmed Luo's capabilities, suggesting that their guild would be stronger than ever with him around. Chen Jun, displeased, accused Luo of waiting until the boss was weakened before intervening. Pointing a finger at Luo, he shouted about the consequences of disobeying the guildmaster's orders. Luo responded by grabbing Chen Jun's finger, twisting it, and reminding him that it was Chen Jun who had ordered him to stay put. Ignoring the gray-haired man who rebuked him for disrespecting the guildmaster, Luo asserted that he had indeed completed the mission as assigned. Su Han supported Luo, telling Chen Jun that without Luo, they would have likely lost the boss and possibly been wiped out, and that his contributions should be recognized. All the hunters who witnessed how Luo defeated the zombie king agreed with what Su Han said. Su Han then turned around and suggested to Luo that they move on to their next quests. After that, both left the scene. Chen Jun was very angry, seeing everyone siding with Luo and even Su Han defending him. He ordered the gray-haired man to keep an eye on Luo, instructing him to report immediately upon discovering Luo's weakness. Meanwhile, Luo and Su Han arrived at a purple forest, which was enveloped in a poisonous mist. Upon entering, Su Han covered her nose with her hands, repelled by the stench. Luo warned Su Han to be cautious, because the poison zombies were much more formidable than the fire and ice variants. Su Han asked if they possessed a high attack, to which Luo explained that they lacked elemental properties, but compensated with a dangerous skill. Just then, a poison zombie appeared. It had a poisonous physique skill, which meant that those who attacked it, or were attacked by it, would enter a poisoned state that couldn't be cleansed for 5 seconds, losing 6% of their health every second. This skill could only affect each target once. Alarmed by the sight and abilities of the poison zombie, Su Han felt scared. Luo reassured her to just make sure to heal periodically. Touched by Luo's concern, Su Han acknowledged his advice and was about to attack when she suddenly remembered something. She handed Luo a magic item as a reward for completing the guild quest. Grateful, Luo thanked Su Han, and they both charged at the poison zombies. Su Han cast a powerful spell, which restrained a poison zombie. As Su Han struggled to contain it alone, she urged Luo, who was preparing a large spell, to hurry. Luo then launched a triple fireball strike, hitting the zombie three times and sending it flying with each hit, dealing 1,500 health damage. They easily killed the zombie. Su Han complimented Luo on his impressive attack damage, and he laughingly credited her assistance for making the fight smoother than expected. As they ventured deeper into the forest, Luo sensed someone following them, but chose not to act. The follower was one of Chen Jun's men. The gray-haired guy reported back to Guildmaster Chen Jun that Luo was completing quests with Su Han, and they were collecting zombie cores. Noticing their friendly interaction, Chen Jun became infuriated, especially since Su Han had never smiled at him after acquiring her Calamity class. The gray-haired man suggested they find a way to separate Su Han and Luo to kick Luo out of the guild. During their conversation, a system notification popped up. It was a notice from Norden Village alerting all class shifters in the borders of Norden of an impending horde invasion in 30 minutes. The level of the horde was 13. Chen Jun, plotting against Luo, laughed and expressed his determination to ensure Luo had no place in Misty Rain Pavilion and to make his life difficult. However, the gray-haired man was concerned, 
pointing out that they had no revive scrolls and that player killing was disabled in safe zones like the respawn points. But Chen Jun had already devised a plan. He explained that once the horde arrived, the safe zone protections would be disabled for other class shifters, providing an opportunity to take down Luo then. On the other hand, Luo and Su Han had killed hundreds of poison zombies along the way, leaving a trail of corpses. They had collected hundreds of gold coins from the zombies, and Su Han was thrilled at the sight of so much gold, remarking to Luo that they were almost done. Luo reminded her that the horde would show up in 30 minutes, urging her to make their efforts count. Just then, a zombie appeared behind Luo and bit his shoulder. Su Han was startled, but quickly raised her staff to attack. However, Luo didn't need her help to kill a weak zombie. He spun his staff and pierced the zombie's head, killing it instantly. However, the bite left Luo bleeding. He sat down, clutching his painful shoulder. Concerned, Su Han asked if he was alright. Luo, acting tough, replied, If one walks along the riverside, they are bound to get their feet wet. He then suggested they had done enough and should head back. Unbeknownst to them, someone was spying on Luo and Su Han and witnessed the entire scene. When Luo and Su Han returned to the village, a system notification congratulated them on completing their resource gathering quest, rewarding them with 100,000 experience points and 9,000 energy. They also obtained zombie armor and leggings, as well as a skill book named Flash. Luo leveled up twice, reaching level 17, and now required 55,000 experience points for the next level. Su Han, not far behind Luo, also leveled up to level 16. Both their energies significantly increased after leveling up. Excited, Su Han told Luo she had reached level 16 and acquired two two-star rank level 15 pieces of equipment. She asked Luo what he had received. Luo smiled and summoned his armored scorpion, telling her he was now level 17. When summoned, the armored scorpion also leveled up three times. Su Han praised Luo, noting that if it weren't for him sharing his experience points with his pets, he would likely be level 20 by now. She then reminded Luo that since the horde was approaching, he should refine his equipment. Luo had forgotten about this, and quickly opened his status window to begin. The first piece of equipment he had obtained from killing the zombie was a level 15 explosive resistant armor, a gold rank item usable only by knights. It increased constitution and endurance by 5 points and blocked 50 points of damage, making it particularly effective against zombies. The second piece of equipment was level 15 gold rank explosive resistant leggings, which offered 95 physical defense and 90 magic defense. They also increased strength and endurance by 5 points and were effective against zombies. Seeing the stats of the equipment, Luo laughed, thinking that with these two pieces on his level 15 silver armored scorpion, no one in the second world could touch him. He told Su Han they were ready and asked her to join him in taking on the horde. Su Han jumped in excitement, but her happiness was short-lived as she received a notification. Her expression changed as she informed Luo that the guild was looking for her and that she needed to head to the office. Her sister was there, and everyone was waiting for her. Seeing that her sister was there too, Su Han wondered if something bad had happened. She turned to Luo and apologized, saying she had family issues and that he would have to face the horde by himself. Luo reassured her that it was all right and urged her to hurry because she wouldn't be able to leave once the event started. Concerned about the impending zombie attack, she cautioned Luo to be careful, noting that even though the zombies were only level 13, they would overwhelm him with their numbers. Luo thanked her for her concern and encouraged her to leave. Su Han then used a dungeon exit scroll, leaving Luo alone. As she left, the weather in the dungeons began to change dramatically. The sky darkened and thundered ominously. A system notification announced, My brave warriors, the zombie horde is arriving, prepare yourselves. All the hunters were ready to confront the zombie horde. Another sector announcement for Norden City warned. Attention, class shifters in Norden. The zombie horde will arrive soon. Until all waves have been repelled, class shifters will be unable to leave the alternate world. The protective effects of Norden have been lifted. The quest will be considered successfully completed if someone kills more than 50 zombies and survives the waves. As the announcement ended, the huge doors of Norden City opened, and a horde of thousands of zombies swarmed into the city. The hunters close to the city doors were immediately surrounded by zombies from all directions, and their overly confident beginning did not end well. Meanwhile, Luo easily dispatched the zombies with his fireball spell, knowing the horde would relentlessly attack for an hour before leaving. All he needed was to eliminate at least 50 of them. While Luo was battling, he received two messages. One was a cry for help from a boy, and the other was from a girl named Sakura of Misty Rain Pavilion, complimenting Luo on his high operational performance 
and asking if he could coach her personally. Smiling as if expecting such a message, Luo replied that he would be there soon. When he arrived at the location specified in the message, he found many hunters from Misty Rain Pavilion lying injured and unconscious outside a building. Two people were observing Luo from inside the building. One of them called Luo a stupid, pompous bastard. Surprised that Luo had shown up so easily, they were Chen Jun and a gray-haired man. The gray-haired man questioned Chen Jun about Luo's defenses, and Chen Jun confirmed his suspicions about Luo's high damage output and vulnerability after being grazed by a zombie. According to Chen Jun, Luo had prioritized his damage attributes at the expense of his defense. The gray-haired man informed Chen Jun that, per his orders, he had positioned twelve archers in ambush in the back alley, confident that this would be sufficient given Luo's low defenses. Chen Jun laughed maliciously, planning to have his men wait at the respawn spot to continuously kill Luo. Once Luo dies, I'll have my men ready at the respawn spot. He won't last a second. I'll kill him over and over again, he declared with a madman's expression, claiming Luo was infringing on his territory by interacting with his woman. Luo entered the building and announced his presence. As he stood in the middle of the hall, hundreds of arrows were shot at him, but he didn't move to dodge them. Instead, he called upon his silver-armored scorpion, which appeared and blocked all the arrows. Chen Jun and his subordinates were shocked to see the armored scorpion, questioning how a supposed weak beast tamer like Luo could manage such a feat. Suddenly, a system notification informed Luo that he had been attacked intentionally by fellow class shifters, but would not be penalized for retaliating within the next ten minutes. Seeing this message, Luo gave a sinister smile and told Chen Jun, Are you done with your show? Then it's my turn. That's all for today, everyone. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thanks to Leopold, Ralph Miller, and Crimson X12, the new members of our channel. Welcome to the family, guys. We've recently launched a membership program here where you can enjoy perks like early access to videos and soon, exclusive content just for members. You'll also receive custom badges and emojis to enhance your interactions. If you're interested, consider joining our membership to enjoy these benefits. Check out the link in the description to join. See you all in the next video.